little enough evening for the roof to be opened here at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. And with that in mind, this ballpark plays a whole lot more livelier with the roof off as opposed to on, which we saw the last two games. I think the Astros want the roof open for the simple reason that their offense has really struggled. And they think that although the visibility isn't great and it's going to be much of the pitcher's favor, they think their offense probably has a little better shot against Maddox than the Cubs offense has against Redding. I would of course disagree with them. I think Maddox is craftier and Redding's fastball is a little straighter. So let's hope the Cubs can take advantage and win their fifth game in a row against a hard throwing right hander whose fastball doesn't move a whole lot. Reading at three and five on the year Maddox five and five for the Cubs and Dusty Baker's ball club really riding an emotional high lines up this way for game three Todd Walker back in the leadoff spot he'll be at second base Ramon Martinez a big day at the plate last night is the shortstop Moises Alou in left field hits third with Aramis Ramirez the Cub cleanup man Todd Hollinsworth is in right field. Derek Lee's hit safely in 13 of the last 14 Cubs games. He'll be at first. Corey Patterson back in in center field. And the battery of Baco and Greg Maddox. There you take a look at Tim Redding on for the 12th start. He's yet to complete a game. And with the use and abuse of that Astro bullpen, the Cubs are hoping to get him out of there rather early. The league is hitting close to 300 against him. That's not real good. That means that you're giving up about 11 to 12 hits per nine innings. You factor a few walks in there and it becomes very difficult to have a very respectable ERA. So the Cubs trying to paste another one on the Astros. If they do, they're going to even the season series at four and four. Redding has averaged five innings a start for Houston this year. And so let's see if Jimmy Williams has to hook him early. That wouldn't bother the Cubs a bit tonight. Here's Todd Walker. We're underway for game three, and Redding's first pitch is called a strike by Darren Spagnardi, our home plate umpire this evening. Walker sporting a seven game hitting streak for the Cubs. He had a huge game one of the series, and Todd went one for four in last night's ball game. Reading on the extreme first base side of the pitching rubber. And that doesn't really help him on that slider to left hand hitters. Fly ball center field pretty well hit that'll drive Biggio back. And that's the deepest part of the ballpark and Walker flies out. Here in our first inning. Let's take a look at the Astros Corona defense. It's Berkman Biggio and Lane left to right. Ensberg, Viscaino, Kenton Bagwell in the infield. Brad Osmus behind the plate. Jim Redding on the hill. Here's last night's hitting hero, Ramon Martinez, gave the Cubs a one run lead in the third inning and had the big two out ninth inning hit against Octavio Dotel. So he's four for nine in this series and has knocked in four runs. One ball, no strikes. says Joe Brinkman at first one ball one strike. That's up the middle Jeff Kent to his right backhanded stand and he makes the play. Four out number two Here's Moises Alou as we welcome our affiliate. Comcast and their viewers in Alsip, Illinois. And our producer Bob Albrecht wonders when it was the when was the last time it was 83 degrees here in June? Probably about 6:30 this morning. Well, in 67 percent humidity, which is almost like desert humidity for these folks here. Two outs, bases empty for Alou. He's hitting 296. That's chopped foul of the plate. Moises has never had much luck with Redding, and that's kind of surprising because he doesn't have a great breaking ball. Well, let's see if he can put the Cubs in front behind Maddox early on tonight. And that 
Let's fist it back toward us. And I'll loop behind 0 2. I would think if they started the games every night at 6 o'clock, you would have some spectacularly low ERAs and some batting averages to match because the visibility just isn't great. You don't pick up the spin on the breaking ball near as well now as you will. 0 oh 2. Line drive into center field. Alou aboard with a two out hit. No two mistake from Redding. And here comes Aramis Ramirez who has feasted in the cleanup spot this year. That fastball was pretty close to down the middle at 0 and 2. That's why Redding has given up many more hits than innings pitched and why his ERA is up there. You're not going to fool anybody with a 3 2 fastball right down the middle. And Moises creeping up on 300 once again. Aramis 3 for 9 in the series with 3 driven in. This Cup team has shown an amazing ability to score runs with two outs. A chance for that here with a man hitting right around the 400 mark since moving into the fourth spot in the batting order. Redding has averaged a home run every five and a third innings. It's not a real good number penciled out over the course of a full season. It pencils out early to 10 of them in 56 innings. This has been a good two out hitting team. Let's see if Ramirez can rally from a two strike hole. And that's fisted into left center field. That's going to drop safely over quickly as Berkman. Alu a big turn. He better hustle back. And a close play nearly got it. Well, I think, first of all, if Moises wanted to, he could have gone to third base. But once having decided to put on the brakes, he was lucky to make it back into second. Going away from the throw Berkman doesn't have the kind of an arm that's going to be able to cut him down at third and with two outs I'm not sure why he didn't make it. Another 0 2 pitch another mistake. You see Berkman he's going to be satisfied just getting the ball into second and Moises decides to get back in just ahead of the tag. So two are on with two out now for Hollinsworth. And that's off the plate ball one. Hollinsworth is my pick to have a big night for the simple reason he knows he's only got two more starts. That's Sammy looking healthy, going to start when we get back to Chicago, and he will return to a lemon once again on the bench. One ball, no strikes. Late called strike. Hollinsworth thought that was too far inside. One and one your count now. Not only will the Cubs welcome Sammy back on Friday, but Mark Grudzalata could be active on Saturday for the Cubs. So Dusty Baker will have some interesting decisions to make when those two men return offensively. The 1 1 pitch. High fly ball hammered right field, pretty deep. Lane going back on the warning track has room, and that'll retire the side. Redding makes two mistakes with two strikes and two outs. The Cubs strand a pair in the top of our first. Heavy dealers. No score as we head to the bottom half of our first inning of play. The Astros really slumping offensively have opened up the roof here at Minute Maid Park as they try to get something going in game three of this four game series. Greg Maddox to the mound on Kerry Wood's birthday today. And Craig Biccio will lead things off for Jimmy Williams. He'll be followed by Jose Vizcaino. Lance Berkman is in left. Jeff kept the cleanup man. Jeff Bagwell back after a cortisone shot yesterday in that ailing right shoulder. Morgan Ensberg is at third base. Jason Lane is in right field. Richard Hidalgo has lost his starting job for Houston. Brad Osmus hits eighth and Tim Redding ninth against Hall of Famer to be Greg Maddox. Maddox on for his 14th start. Trying to move over 500. That ERA just a touch over four. Biggio lines the first pitch into the left field corner. And he's on his way to second base with a leadoff double. This is where Houston has struggled of late, Steve. They've had a lot of men in scoring position. In fact, Biggio led off last night's game with a double and was stranded. One of 12 Houston runners left on base in game two of the series. Biggio always hit Maddox well. And he gets a first ball cut fastball over the outside corner and takes it right down the line. 
wisely. The ball boy, knowing the ball's in play, gets out of the way. So Maddox to the stretch after one hitter with Vizcaino coming up. He's five for eight in the series. I'd have to believe that Vizcaino, however he does it, is going to move along Biggio. He does it with a punch. Maddox makes the play. Vizcaino sacrifices Biggio to third for Lance Berkman. All in all, a real rough night for Berkman last night. He struck out three times, hit into a double play, and committed the game deciding error in left field in the ninth inning. Good butt by Vizcaino, leaving Maddox with only one play. Similar situation last night with Berkman up, but Carlos Zambrano struck him out on a high fastball. Now, Maddox doesn't have the kind of fastball that Carlos Zambrano possesses, and Berkman, the last couple times he's faced Maddox, has hit the ball out of the ballpark. The Cubs have held him down by keeping the ball in on his hands. Well, let's see if Greg can do that here. The Cubs will concede a run if the ball's hit up the middle, and he did try inside but missed with ball one. For Berkman. Biggio scores, and Jeff Kent is coming up. There's the difference in the velocity of Maddox and Zambrano. When Maddox went upstairs with a fastball, he was able to throw it by Berkman. With Maddox, if he gets a fastball up and out over the plate, he can't get it by Berkman, and it turns into the first run of the game. First first inning hit for Berkman in the series. And his second hit overall against the Cubs here in Houston. That'll bring up Jeff Kent. Kent has had his problems as well. He's just one for eight against the Cubs so far in this four game set. Wow. Maddox jumps in front with strike one. Kent has faced Maddox a whole lot. 69 at bats. And he's hit four homers. But Maddox will try to bring that fastball from the outside in and try to nip the outside corner when he has to go get him. No balls, one strike. This is what Maddox tried to do against Houston in Chicago, you might remember. The first inning, he pitched high and tight several times, and it was very effective for him. He doesn't want Kent to hit the ball inside. He wants him to have to reach and hit the ball away. First is Berkman, who runs reluctantly for this Houston team. The whole Houston team runs reluctantly with Everett out of the lineup. That is their running game. He swipes seven of their 20 bases. And he's got a hamstring problem, probably unable to go tonight. Double play ball, maybe. Second for a one. The throw a little wide at second. Walker handles the bag. Would have been a tough turn, irrespective of that throw from Ramirez. Berkman's forced, and there are two men out now. Ramirez unhappy with himself because he didn't give Walker any kind of a throw. Ramos only has three errors this year. Been a very good year for him, but this throw guaranteed that Walker only had one play. It would have been very difficult to turn to because Kent does have decent speed. Bagwell for the first time in nine years in this series hitting in the number five spot. He was hitting three. If he has a chance to go to the Hall of Fame it will be because he was a number three hitter but. In as much of a slump as he's been Jimmy Williams met with him and dropped him down. Bagwell nine for his last forty seven. At the plate. Bagwell in the month of June. Barely above the 200 mark with that batting average. And the shoulder, although he won't say it, really has been killing him. And it's not going to get any better. He's taken two quarter zone shots, one at the start of the year, and it worked. He got off to a terrific April start for this Astro team, and one yesterday. Well, he said it's a minimum three quarter zone shot year. This year he's thinking he might have to have four of them. And he's not sure how much longer. He wants to go like just about everybody else. You want to perform at the top end. If you start to slip, he's had a long and great career. 
Line drive center field. Bagwell back with a bang. That's into center. Kent around second. He'll make it to third with two outs. So both Redding and Maddox getting hit hard with two strikes in the first inning of tonight's game. Well, they're getting hit on fastballs though. This is a time of day where you don't really see the spin on breaking balls very well. And both of these pitchers have tried to establish a fastball but they're not doing much with it. Maddox cannot pitch upstairs. He doesn't have that kind of velocity anymore. And when he's gotten it up in this inning the Astros who have opened the roof to get this place a little livelier are certainly showing that it's helped. So a run on three hits so far and Morgan Innsberg the young third baseman digs in. Are you surprised that this guy hasn't hit the ball out of the ballpark yet for him. He made a conscious effort to hit the ball to right and right center field. But last year he hit 291 with 25 home runs. I'm not thinking you want to change too much when you do that. Roll toward third Aramis to his left. And that'll take care of Houston in the first inning. They score the game's first run on three hits. And to the second we go down a skinny run. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by. Mike. Throw that fastball out away from Lee. That's a ball low. One ball one strike. There, he's only faced him five times. He's two for five. And not coincidentally they've both gone out of the ballpark. A short porch in left the Crawford boxes 315 feet away above the major league scoreboards. When you miss inside and when you're not a trickster when you throw just about everything the same speed eventually you have to go back out over the plate and Derek's been hitting the ball real hard to straight away center and left center. Good breaking ball evens the count. the dimensions straight away center is like an airport but if you hit it to 436 and straight away center it's like a closed airport because you've got to hit it a ton out there to get it over the fence and Lee's done that twice in this series Dusty said he's hit about 850 feet worth of home runs that ended up being doubles that's tipped caught by Rat Osmus. First strikeout for Redding. One up, one down in the Cubs second. Corey was bunting for the game today and has done a whole lot of that with Sonny Jackson. In fact, Jose Macias and Corey have been working on laying it down. It was a fastball on the outside corner. They threw right by Lee. So you've got Ensberg well in on the grass third. And this is very heavy grass here in Houston. And very heavy air too. A humid night. And that moves the back foot of Patterson. One ball, no strikes. Well, he squared to bunt. That brought Ensberg charging. And somewhere during the bat, if you want to, you can line it by him pretty easily. Drilled down the right field line, but he pulled it foul. The scoreboard here shows the count 0 and 2. That is incorrect. It's 1 and 1 now for the Cubs center fielder with the bases empty. Houston leads on a first inning base hit by Berkman. Routed toward Bagwell at first. He'll take the play unassisted for out number two. That'll bring up Paul Marco. Cubs catcher hitting 222. And although Bagwell is not going to throw the ball well any longer because of all of that damage in his throwing shoulder, he still has real good hands at first base. He's been a very good player for a long time, and he'll be borderline Hall of Fame if he puts up a few more numbers. He's got, what, another year on his deal down here in Houston? Yeah, and don't forget, if he wants to, and who knows what's in anyone's mind, you get the DH in the other league, sure. and I think he would fill the bill for a lot of teams. One ball, no strikes. This day and age of pampered superstars, there are some players in baseball who would have complained about being dropped so visibly in a big series in the batting order like Bagwell was. But he had it right. He said, look, it's not about 
making Jeff Bagwell happy. It's about helping us win games. And plays like that at third by Morgan Ensberg are going to help this Houston team win some games. Hopefully not tonight. Three and out for the Cubs in the second. Down one to nothing. The 200 summer jam. Join the party now at your Cadillac dealer. Cadillac. Breakthrough. Visit your Chicagoland area Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer. See dealer for residency restrictions. Tonight, get ready for the next great thing in sports entertainment as Max Kellerman comes to Fox Sports Net. Max won't pull any punches as he goes toe to toe with the biggest names in sports. IMAX tonight at 10:30 only, only on Fox Sports Net. Jason Lane grounds the ball to second. One pitch, one man out. Richard Hidalgo, according to a published report, will not be the starting right fielder for these Astros. They're trying to move him with the New York Mets apparently showing some interest. Well, he has a very big contract. He still has a lot of play left in him. And he's going to be a free agent. And that combination cries out for trying to find some place else to play. Here's Brad Osmus. And that's off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Osmus has done a good job against the Cubs pitching staff this year and in this series. Back to the mound. That's an easy play. And two quick outs here in our second inning. Well, the longer the Mets hang around and they're far from out of it at four and a half games back, the more the temptation for Jim Duquette to make a move. Obviously, you're battling the back page of the Daily News and the Post, and that Yankee team is loaded once again. So we feel that Florida probably is not going to run away with it, and Philadelphia hasn't really played as well as they can play. And the Mets decided that Denny Walling would no longer be their hitting coach, and now Don Baylor is going to help fill that bill for a while. We know Don, of course, from his days as the Cubs manager. And he's the guy that was an outstanding hitting coach. He's the man that resuscitated the career of Andres Galarraga when he was with the St. Louis Cardinals. And then, of course, the big cat went to Colorado when Don was managing there. And they had the Blake Street Bombers and got to the playoffs very early in the early days of that Rocky franchise. One ball, two strikes. To the Houston pitcher Tim Redding. I think as much as anybody, Andres Galarraga probably should have paid a bit of a premium to Don Baylor because he changed his stance, gave him a half season with the Cardinals where he hit everything in sight, and then allowed him another five or six years in the league. One, two, three, four, Greg Maddox in the second. Now let's see if he can help his own cause as we move quickly to our third. Focus, one of car and driver's 10 best cars for 2004 for the low Joe Rizzo Ford price of $9,900. Joe Rizzo Ford, Rizzo Ford on 159th Street in Orland Park and 22nd in Harlem in North Riverside. Sports show period tonight on Fox Sports Net. Margarita. <laughs> Saturday, June 19th is Jewel Osco Day at Wrigley Field. Exciting prizes will be given throughout the ball game. It's the Cubs and the Oakland Athletics in regular season play. June 19th on Jewel Osco Day. Well, you seem to be very amiable today. I'm always amiable. When you don't stick me with another lunch tab. One ball, no strikes to Greg Maddox. Well, I know she did get a haircut. That was very nice. Yeah, but Jimmy Bank has now turned into load number two. Well, Mr. Free Meal himself. It's obviously. embarrassing. See, you get your money's worth. And I've noticed as you get older, yes. when they spend more time on your nose and eyebrows, maybe your hair is thinning a touch. Hey, as you, <laughs> as you see with these eyebrows, they got to spend a lot of time on those too, man. They break out the, the weed eater to go to work on those things. One ball, two strikes. But at least there's now two of them. But see? you've got, I mean, that hair is terrific. Thanks. 
And there's James Bank, the fine traveling secretary of the Cubs, when he's not taking a rest in our booth. Two balls, two strikes. He's the hardest working man in show business. It's, a lot of people think it's James Brown. It's not. It's James Bank. Old Fallon out of play, two and two. We we give Jimmy a bit of a hard time, but in all honesty, folks, we couldn't do what we do on the road without his hard work. Traveling with the players, the coaches, handling all the flights, the hotel accommodations, it's really an unsung job. And Jimmy does as good a job as anybody in baseball. And we try to unsing it as much as possible. No question about it. Here's a good chance for the Cubs now as Tim Redding gives up a leadoff single to Greg Maddox. Redding keeps on throwing a whole lot of fastballs. The Cubs are going to wind up taking the lead. His slider has been pretty good. He views himself actually as having a good sinker. He's one of the few people around the Astros that would concur with that. Mostly he throws a riding fastball. Here's Todd Walker. By the way, I think I got us an upgrade in our next trip. And Way to go. Banks probably going to hook us up after those nice terms of endearment as they were. And we don't have to room together in that convertible studio. Anything but that. One ball, no strikes. High fly ball into shallow right center. On comes Lane. Biggio takes over. Biggio. Like Corey Patterson has yet to commit an error in the outfield and it's a pretty remarkable story an all star catcher and all star second baseman now playing well for Houston in center field now. Well completely different as far as Patterson is concerned because Patterson has blazing speed. Biggio still has good speed if you consider a center fielder in his late 30s. The remarkable aspect of it is he's pretty close to the all star team. Because obviously they played here in Houston, he would have made it at three different positions if he can secure a spot. I shudder to ask the question if that's ever been done before. The three different positions? I would assume it has. But I doubt if they've ever been catcher, second base, and center field. Certainly not that. Maybe Pete Rose, who played a couple of different positions. Could have been infield and, and maybe the outfield once, but when you move behind the plate, Obviously you have to be a tough guy if you go back there at all. They moved him to second because of his great speed. And they moved him to center field because they had to get Jeff Kent and they had to put another bat in the lineup. And Biggio, who's worn only that Astro uniform in 16 seasons, has done a better than adequate job in center field. So that might be a question for our friends at, at Stats Inc. And that's of course assuming Biggio does get the starting nod by virtue of the fan vote. We won't get the starting nod. I think that's going to be taken care of, but he's got a chance to be selected. He's having a real good year. One, two count. Ramon pulls that toward third. Funny hop. Ensberg stays with it. Kent the turn. And the Cubs are done in our third inning of play. One nothing Astros. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Over 2,800 nonstop daily flights to 60 destinations all across the country. View it, the spirit of American style. And by Rico. How well do you print, copy, scan, fax? How well do you share? Pack the car. Pack the car. Car. In the Harvard. In Harvard, yeah. Dollar. Tonic. Boston Tea Party. 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 I need a dollar for a tonic. Y'all want to get some chowder? Chowder. The concert was wicked hardcore. The concert was wicked hardcore. Getting ready to go to Boston? Fly Southwest Airlines nonstop to nearby Providence or Manchester for just $79 each way. You are now free to move about the country. Here's an honest question. If we don't scream and shout or pound on the hood, and we offer you a great car with award-winning quality, rated a first for safety, that gets nearly 30 miles per gallon highway, for a car like that, would you expect this? Now get 3,000 cash back on the 2004 Buick LeSabre. Or if you're a current GM owner, we'll make that 5,000. It's time to see your Buick dealer. When we are dancing and you're dangerous, Lindy me, I get ideas. 
I get ideas And after we have kissed goodnight mm, Still you linger Rico moves your ideas forward I think you get ideas too Cubs fans, enjoy a drink with your friends before, during, or after the game at the Friendly Confines. Near the corner of Addison and Sheffield, the Friendly Confines offers easy access in and out of the game. Enjoy Cubs ambience inside or order from the grill and relax in the outdoor patio. Tomorrow, Frank Thomas and the White Sox take off. They're hitting caps and face Mike Lowell and the Marlins. Tomorrow at 5.30 only on Fox Sports Net. How about the Sox come back? against Florida late in that game last evening. Certainly a very good night for the city of Chicago as both teams staged late comebacks and both teams came away with a win. Carlos Lee halfway to Joe DiMaggio. A scant 28 to go. And he got that uh, 28th consecutive game with a hit in the 10th inning last night. For the White Sox. We'll be seeing them in the next week or so. Our first look at the Southsiders coming at U.S. Cellular Field after we visit the St. Louis Cardinals next week. The 0-2 pitch to Biggio, who doubled and scored the game's only run in the bottom of the first. Easy play for out number one. Well, occasionally you hang a breaking ball and you get away with it. That time it hung up high enough that Biggio was able to get a piece of it, but not much on a sinking line drive to left. Watch this one. It just kind of hangs up there, says hit me. Biggio doesn't hit it all that well. So you got to get away with a mistake every now and then. Here's Vizcaino. His sacrifice led to the first Houston run as well. And he couldn't pull the trigger. Oh, Bob Beck's feeling better. His son Phil sends Bob get well wishes. And happy 75th birthday to Joan Korzynski of Norwich. Her family watching our game tonight from Houston. 0 and 1 to count to his Kaino. I do have to tell you that Bob Beck is a wonderful guy. He comes down to spring training all the time to work with the Ho Ho Cams, even though he lives in the Chicago area, and we certainly wish him well. Too low to Vizcaino, two balls and a strike. ERA by starters. And since April 20th, the Cubs, the best in the league. High, lazy, twisting fly ball to left. Boys of Salu should have no trouble with that one. And he doesn't. Two quick outs. Maddox is starting to find his rhythm. He has retired six consecutive men. Maddox is one of the few guys on the Cubs staff that has absolutely no problem with Jose Vizcaino. He terrorizes everybody else. But Vizcaino now just three for 28 lifetime against Maddox. But Greg would like to keep the pitches to a minimum by retiring Berkman, who's really the lone left handed banger in this lineup. And that's what's been hurting them. Chippy, this is why I believe the batting average is simply the most overrated statistic that we have in a game that's filled with statistics. And the reason is Houston is leading the National League in hitting with a 277 batting average. Right. However, how about run score? Run scored, they're not leading. In fact, there's many teams ahead of them in run score. That's one of the reasons why they're struggling. And you can get as many base hits as you want. Obviously, it depends on when you get them. You'd like to have some speed if you're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark. By comparison, the Cubs have 89 home runs. The Astros have 60. So you have to have many more hits to be able to score runs. And they're just not doing it. One, two count. And he tries to get the ball inside, as you suggested, against Berkman. And it's even at two balls, two strikes. Well, Maddox is able to cut that fastball very well in on the hands of the left-hand hitter. What he's probably thinking about now is to die that ball from the inside corner and catch the corner. And he's not able to do it. 
That's been the one difference in Greg this year that I think in years past and again it might come to him but he used to almost throw it like a laser on that inside corner get just about every call and this year to left handers he's missed a lot there. And that's when he's got hurt. All foul past Jose Cruz senior three balls two strikes again to count to Berkman. He's shaking his head that's a pitch he wishes he had back. Well that ball had a little too much of the plate for Maddox's liking. And had it gone down the line it would be at least two. Off his thumbs head out of play. We want to send along belated congratulations to John McDonough's high school alma mater. John as you know a graduate of Notre Dame High School. It took John six or seven years to get through it but that's another story the Notre Dame Dons the Illinois class 2A state baseball champions. They knocked off Joliet Catholic by a 6 4 score. And a line drive into right field with two outs. Berkman's two for two Hollinsworth bobbles but no advance by the Houston left fielder. Well that's a tough matchup for Maddox because he really hasn't been able to get inside on him and Berkman who had a real tough night last night not having a tough day today that one was on the inner portion of the plate pretty much thigh high and Berkman crushed it. One of the guys you don't want to run on too much is Hollinsworth. He does have a pretty strong arm. And you know this is the one thing that I have a problem with in baseball. You saw Berkman essentially walk to first base. He was trotting. He took for granted that he was going to single that time. If he was out of the box running taking an aggressive turn he's standing at second base. It's a little nuance in the game that when everything is really close you see him pull up. He absolutely pulled up at first. You can't get it going again. Take the aggressive turn a guy bobbles it you're on second. We've seen that a lot on this road trip not only by Houston Anaheim the Cubs you thought were guilty of that a bit in that Angel series as well for the most part they're going to ask you four possibly five times to run real hard 90 feet. Obviously they pay you a lot of money to do that. It's nice when you do. Oh and one the count to Kent. Swing and a miss. What do you think John's favorite high school subject was by the way. Well obviously the one he took seven times marketing. Oh, we know that. Lunch too huh. He was very big at lunch. Oh Mac. The best brand muffin <laughs> recipes. I think so. At Notre Dame High School. Oh and two the count. That is a pretty good accomplishment though. Winning yes, a state is. championship. I don't care at which level you win it. You still have to defeat a lot of good teams. And I think that the endowment that John is about to present to those high schoolers is really going to help them sustain that particular performance for a long time. Yeah, McDonough Stadium has a nice ring to it don't you think. The pitch is right over the middle of the plate and Jeff Kent takes a call third strike. No runs one hit one man left. Cubs are down a run to Tim Redding and the Astros. They like my Chevy. Current GM owners and lessees get $5,000 loyalty cash on a 2004 Tahoe. That's right. Current GM owners and lessees get $5,000 loyalty cash on Tahoe. Mr. Santo can I drive your Chevy. No. See your Chicago land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Well, last night, as we mentioned, Carlos Lee, a 28 game hit streak for the White Sox, which eventually will lead us to our AFLAC trivia question. But first things first, Moises Alou in the batter's box. Affleck. Which cup player holds the team record for the longest hitting streak? Didn't Ronnie have a 28 game streak? I'm pretty sure he did. And I'm not sure if that's the longest. I know that he had a substantial hitting streak. Could it possibly be our fearless prognosticator on the radio side, Ronald Sato? Could be. Well, he's been a happy man lately. The Cubs yes, are red sir. hot. He's got his son on the trip with him. Which also makes him red hot. Two but, balls I will, a strike. but I will tell you a sad thing. Ronnie flew down here and made his son ride coach. Can you believe that? Jeff has never forgiven him for it. It's actually very sad the amount of glue that man has. Five extra dollars you can upgrade, man. 
Three balls and a strike. Moist is going to get a pretty good pitch to hit. Again, he's a dead full hitter in a ballpark that truly favors right handers. Redding misses middle out. Moist is in good shape. Pulled foul and out of play. The count fills up at three and two now. Moist has entered this season with a batting average at 300 for his career. And he's right about there entering this at bat. Rounded toward Jeff Ken. Boy, Redding's throwing the ball exceptionally well to this point of the game. A quick out here in the top of our fourth inning. Well, this is very good news for the Astros, not good news for a whole lot of other people because the Astros are having their pitching problems with Andy Pettit due to make a rehab start at Round Rock in Double A. Then they've got Oswald with a bad side, which has seen him take a couple quarter zone shots. Miller complained a little bit of the arm problems last night, but he turned it around and all things went well. So they're getting their injuries in the staff. That ball into right field. It'll drop in front of Jason Lane, and Aramis Ramirez is two for two. And you're. Query as to Ron Sano. Mm -hmm. Was that your Aflac answer? I'm going to have to. I might be wrong. I'm I usually am. No, not that. But he did have a 28 gamer. He did, but that's not the longest. It's not. Nope. Carmen Fanzone. Close. Here's Hollinsworth. Let's see if he can turn this game around. Oh, that's right. It was a rookie. I forgot how soon they forget. I towering fly ball. Kent coming over. Long run for him, and he makes a fine grab and an off balance throw to keep Ramirez anchored at first. Doesn't really matter if you're going to throw the ball on the money after you make that catch. What you have to do is get it back into the infield. And Kent ranging well down the line, knowing that Lane was playing deep. Kent's the only guy can make this play. He does and gets rid of it very quickly. A heads up play, and he stops any advancement on the part of Ramirez. But Jeff Kent, not known as a great glove man, made a real fine play on that play. Well, Derek Lee struck out swinging his first time up. Redding fell behind him deep in the count, but rallied to get him leading off the second. A ball in the dirt, one ball, no strikes. We'll keep an eye on the scoreboard for you. Oakland's in St. Louis tonight. The Cardinals finally handed Oakland their first ever defeat at the hands of a National League Central team last night. Well, the Oakland should get used to it because there's a few more coming before they get off the road. Three in Chicago coming up on Friday. 1-0 pitch high and tight to Derek Lee. The Astros drafted pretty well when they selected Redding in the 20th round of the June 97 draft. He's been less than overpowering in the major leagues, but he's a major league starter, and you'd like to see those guys come through their system. Two balls, no strikes. Ground ball up the middle. Ms. Kaino gives some ground. And the flip to Jeff Kent at the second base bag retires Ramirez. Redding has the Cubs mystified into the middle of the fourth. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? Aflac. The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? Aflac. Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh -huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Half lack. Ask about it at work. Uh -huh. It comes to fresh. No one does it like Subway. Behold our line of delicious low-fat sandwiches. Made fresh with under six pounds of fat. Pile on fresh veggies. And don't forget the fresh baked bread. Because this is Subway. And this is how you eat fresh. Subway. Eat fresh. The real Subway series is going on now at Subway restaurants. What side are you on? Try Dusty's North Sider with ham and pepperoni or Ozzy's South Sider with turkey, roast beef, and bacon. Just $2.99 each. Subway. Eat fresh. The 260 horsepower supercharged Grand Prix Comp G. The new 275 horsepower GXP. And now, the 
a 350 horsepower GTO. Pontiac, fuel for the soul. Revisit our Aflac trivia question. Which Cub has the longest consecutive game hit streak in franchise history? And harken back to 1894, Bill Dolan, a 42 gamer. And I remember that one, Chip, and I'll tell you, he was robbed in that 43rd game. Absolutely robbed. It was a crime. Jerome Walton had a 30 game hit streak in 1989. Well, that year of the 40 tour, Bob Rosenberg called a hit and error and at the end of the streak. Doesn't surprise me a bit. Those things. One ball, one strike to Jeff Bagwell, who singled in the Houston first. That's pretty remarkable. 30 games, 42 games, 56 games in a row with a hit. Pete Rose had 44, I believe, Correct. before sidearming, back turning. Gene Garber was able to throw him a couple of changeups and end his streak in Atlanta. He was screaming at him, throw me a fastball. Oh, sure. We we like to do that. We'd like <laughs> to give hitters something real sure. good to hit. Two balls, two strikes to Bagwell. Rick Maddox wanted that last pitch, didn't get it. His second base hit. Maddox very unhappy with himself. He thought he had the strikeout. I think Paul Baco is talking with Darren Spagnardi right now. He's not facing him, but you know that he said, Look, you got to give my guy that pitch. He spent a lot of years and he's going to the Hall of Fame because of that pitch. Now, Baco's not trying to show him up. Maddox won't show him up, but he's just letting him know, Look, the ball hit my glove. I set up on the outside corner. I mean, my guy's got to have that. Here's Ensberg. He bounced into a force play. Nothing happening. Bagwell, one out of four in stolen base attempts this year. Once reaction to Maddox, he thought he got him. That's about as animated as he gets on the hill. And then he threw a pitch two out over the plate, and Bagwell took advantage of it. One ball, no strikes. Runner goes. Pitch cut on and missed. The Baco throw right on the money. Bagwell gunned down for the fourth time in five tries, and there's out number one. They used the hit and run. And Bagwell, no match for the arm of Baco, who got rid of the ball quickly and couldn't have laid it to second base any better. You see Bagwell looking back. That's the tip off. It is the hit and run. As you can see, Walker just waiting for him to arrive. So a one-two count now to Morgan Ensberg. Mike Lamb not with his Houston team. He's attending a family funeral out in California. Deep in the hole at short. Ramon couldn't get a handle on it. That'll be an infield hit for Ensberg. So best thing that Ramon man short. Yeah, the, the best thing that Ramon did was not throw the ball. When he got in the hole knowing that Ensberg runs real well, he thought about it, then had the ball slip out of his hand. Only thing can happen to you on that is you throw it away because you're not going to get the out at first base. And speaking of the Cubs defense, they're number one in the National League. Now they're way down the list. They're last in turning of double plays. One of the reasons they got a lot of strikeout pitchers. One on one out for Lane who Swung at the first pitch Maddox offered him in the second. That's another reason why and an underappreciated reason why this Cub team has stayed very much alive just two games back in the Central Division race. Unlike Cubs, year, Cubs teams in years past, they've consistently caught the baseball. Well, I don't think this is a great defensive team, and I think that the season will bear that out. But I do know that man at first base has taken this team made them number one in the league defensively where they would probably be at least 
at the bottom part of the upper third without Lee at first. Aramis Ramirez over at third base too has quite obviously shored up the Cub defense. He's, he's made been, just three knock on He's, he's been terrific. His hands have been great. But like every other infielder the Cubs have, they've been saved a lot of errors by Derek Lee scooping balls out of the dirt. One ball, no strikes. He went around, says Spagnardi. That might be a break. One and one, you count. Jason Lane can't believe it. We saw this young man last night show some pretty good power with a double and triple. Watch it again. Good enough for Spagnardi. Out of play, one ball, two strikes. Reds are dueling with Texas again. It's 2 2 in the third inning of play. Ken Griffey Jr. again seeking to join the 500 home run club for Cincinnati. Reds were winners in 11 innings yesterday and sent undefeated Paul Wilson to the mound tonight. He's 7 0, most surprisingly for Cincinnati. He's another guy with a better than average shot at going to the All Star game. Here it's 1 0 Houston. Runner at first for Jason Lane, the starting right fielder for Houston tonight. And that's that pitch Greg just can't get called. Two and two, your count. He's only been to bat 57 times. He has shown pretty decent power. He has grounded into one double play. Ground ball here would probably be two. A swing and a miss. Four out number two. Maddox has his third strikeout. And that'll bring up Brad Osmus who tapped back to the Cubs starter. And now Baco again with Spagnardi talking things over in this fourth inning. That was the outside pitch once again. Spagnardi is telling him, if you set up with your glove off the plate, I'm not going to give you the pitch. There's the strikeout pitch, tantalizing. And that's the changeup grip that Greg Maddox uses. A ball out to Osmus, one ball, no strikes. Houston with six base hits in this game. of the six singles on a night when you figure the ball would be flying hasn't happened yet you don't mind Ensberg running in this situation because worst case scenario he's thrown out you lead off with Osmus I think that's what Maddox has in mind he knows if he gets the ball to Baco with anything on it Paul has a real good shot at throwing out any base runner especially one without blazing speed Ball no strikes. Lee saves the throwing air as Ensberg dives back to first. One ball, one strike. Derek picks it out of the dirt. And Darren Spagnardi goes out to take a look at the ball. The reason is that ball was scuffed. And although you know. Pitchers are men of the highest integrity and would never intentionally use a scuff baseball. Spagnardi wanted to know if it was unusable. I've heard that before. One ball, one strike. Again, back to the mound. Osmus is two for two in comebackers tonight. And the Astros are done in the fourth. Let's see if the Cubs bats can make some noise. They trail one to nothing. Minutes from the Eisenhower from the city or suburbs are 312 surplus for weekly specials and closeouts serving you since 1977. Military and police fly. Now a few words from the drill instructor. For a Pontiac in-game update, I'm Gail Fisher inside the Fox Sports Net newsroom. Let's get caught up on some NL Central scores. Texas uh, drew first in this game, but Cincinnati has tied it. It's 2-2 in the top of the fourth. Paul Wilson getting hit a little bit. Jason Marquis on the mound for the Cardinals as they host the Oakland A's. Rich Harden pitching for Oakland. Thank you, Gail. Back here in Houston, it's the Astros by a run. We're in the fifth already with Corey Patterson leading things off. 
First pitch swinging, ground ball to Vizcaino. He gloves, he grabs, he guns, and it gets his man by a half step. One pitch, and one man out in our Toyota fan of the game inning. Dave Brown from Chicago, our contestant. If the Cubs can tie or take the lead here, Dave will win a Fox Sports Net Toyota prize package, including a hat and a T-shirt. Visibility getting better. I think it is. It's still not real good yet. That's one of the reasons why this game has been dominated by the pitchers. We'll move along. Right around the 7:30, quarter to eight range, and then the lights will take over and the visibility will get a whole lot better. Heck, by that time, the way these guys are working, we might be in the eighth inning. Well, from Maddox's standpoint, you want to work as quickly as possible because you want to take advantage of this visibility as long as you possibly can. Baco ahead in the count at two balls, no strikes. Back to the mound. Easy play, two outs. After last night's ball game, the Astros had a team meeting in their clubhouse. It wasn't uh, a real gripe session. It was more of a, hey, let's circle the wagons and rally the troops kind of meeting, from what we've been told. And like the Cubs, they're just going through a a bad spate of injuries and for Octavio Dotel trying to fill the shoes of Billy Wagner has proven to be a very difficult thing as it would be for anybody as dominant as he was wearing the Astro uniform. Last night the Astros scored their first two runs in the sixth. That was when the visibility and again that game started at seven o'clock here so the visibility started to get better and the Cubs rally came in the night. And that is almost impossible to do what the Cubs did last night. In fact, the Cubs for only the third time won a game when trailing after eight innings. It's not easy. It's especially difficult on the road. Maddox puts a charge into that, hits that into the upper deck. But well foul for strike two. A lot of Cub fans up there. We heard the chant last night of Let's Go Cubs, drowned out by the Houston faithful. All great McLean hopes is that they come to the ballpark. Well, they have been in this series. They had 38,000 James Bond here for game two, 43,067 in game one. They're averaging, well, close to, I mean, they're at. Over 300,000 more fans this year, averaging 10,000 more per game. Roger Clemens has a lot to do with that. Andy Pettit has a lot to do with that as well. So Drake McLean, money well spent for those two Texans. Two balls, two strikes, bases empty. Houston by a first inning run leads this game. Redding throwing a lot of pitches to Maddox who singled against him in the third. Not much wind to speak of tonight. You see the American flag in play in center. And Maddox on base for the second time in this game. That'll bring up Todd Walker, who's flied hard to center twice. He can turn the game around with two outs. Again, the Cubs very productive in these situations. With Redding, you tell yourself you've got to get the ball over to the pitcher. I mean, I don't want to get to the top of the lineup with his inning still alive. And the harder he tried to throw a strike, the worse it got. Walker. With Jeff Kent tied atop the National League second base home run list this season. Each of them have 10. Walker's been pretty efficient with the long ball in this park. You would think that Redding would try to keep the ball away from him. No balls, one strike. It's even now at one and one. Cubs will have some decisions to make. Mark Rodzelonic is coming back over the weekend. How much playing time is Dusty going to have Grudzelonic and Walker share at second base?
other decision to my way of thinking is Aramis Ramirez has been so productive hitting fourth. How does Dusty Baker settle Sosa in the lineup with Alu and Aramis Ramirez? That's why they paid Dusty the big bucks. That's why he has a lot of responsibility. 2 1. Ball three low. Three balls and a strike. Redding pitching himself into a fifth inning jam here. And with the advantage shifting to Walker, Redding gets one middle in. Figure Todd to hit it awfully hard. They're not holding Maddox close at first. They would actually welcome him to run. Three balls, one strike. Line drive right center field. That's going to drop in for a hit. Lane will cut it off. Maddox with a look over his shoulder will head to third. So again, the Cubs continue to be productive with two out singles. Let's see if Martinez can provide another one here and get this game tied at one. Osmus going out to talk with Redding. He's not real happy about falling behind and walking Maddox and falling behind Walker because he had to go at him with a fastball. It was on the inner portion. And Todd, who's been swinging the bat very well, trying to make that decision when they do activate Grozelanek that much harder, puts runners at the corners. So half the Cubs, total of six hits, have come with two men out. And Martinez, the hitting hero last night, a chance to get this game tied. Malone drove in three, and last night's affair. He's 0 for 2 thus far tonight. Nowhere near ball one way outside. With two outs and runners in scoring position. You can see the Cubs have been particularly effective. Moises Alou leading the way. Walker and Ramon along with Michael Barrett right there all over 300. Cubs would love it if Alou could come up here with a couple of Cubs on the bags and Bert Hooten will make a visit. Well, for Redding everything was sailing along smoothly quickly two up and two down here in the fifth. And then he ran into some problems with falling behind hitters. When you've only averaged a little over five innings per start when you get to that number it starts to prey on your mind. And it could be that you lose a little sharpness off the breaking ball because he's made a lot of early exits. So Osmus and Hooten finish their pep talk. You see the pitch count with two on two out in the Cub fifth. Pitch two balls, no strikes. Ripped back foul, two and one now. Chance now. Three balls, one strike. Redding sets. And he missed low. The bases are loaded with two outs. And here comes Moises Alou. Two walks and a single, and all this starting with the free pass to Greg Maddox. It's a recipe for disaster, not only the walk, but falling behind all the Cub hitters after two were out. And Moises has been real effective with the bases loaded during the course of his career. They played him very deep, and kind of surprisingly, straight away in the outfield. Surprisingly, for a guy that's been pretty much a pull hitter his whole life. So Reddick will go to the windup with the bags full and two cub outs. The pitch. Low and away, ball one. 
advantage in the mental aspect for Redding. I think you're absolutely right. He was just sailing right along through four and, and here in the fifth big problem. And started to miss a number of times and continues to fall behind. That will certainly enable you to pad that earned run average. One ball, no strikes. He almost threw that away. Ball two, two and oh. That's got to be the loneliest feeling in the world. One run lead, you just seemingly can't throw a strike. Becomes very difficult, and it's difficult to get out hitters when you're 2 0 because then you usually have to get them out in the strike zone. It's tough to get a good strike by Moises without him hitting it hard. That one popped away. Ball three. And you have to believe that even with Ramirez in the on deck circle, Dusty would give a Lou, who's a very patient hitter, the 3 0 green light. Doesn't mean you have to swing. But if you do, make it middle in, and there's Kirk Bullinger throwing in the pen. Three balls, no strikes, bases loaded for the Cubs, down one to nothing. Moises takes one. Redding still has to throw two more to get out of this big two out mess. One pitch. It hit it. Moises Salu, a very painful RBI. Or did they say it's a foul ball? I think Alou thought it was a tip. And the home plate umpire said it hit him. How about that? Alou thought it was a foul ball. And Jimmy Williams will argue the Cubs are going to tie the game for the moment. But first things first, Joe Brinkman's going to come in and offer a little help. Moises has a smile on his face. He knew that ball didn't hit it. And if it hit anything, it did tip off the bat. So all you ask is the umpires to get it right. The Cubs would dearly love to tie it up. Moises would get a run batted in. And he'd do it without a bruise. Watch it again. Fastball in. It hit his elbow and then the bat, I think. I think so. I think it just hit the back. So now Dusty Baker out for an explanation. From that angle, it looked for a moment like it might have grazed the elbow, but Alu doesn't grab it. And now Dusty wants to talk things over with Brinkman. The bags will remain full. Not only didn't he grab it, but he didn't take the shoe protector off, and he went and picked up his bat. He thought that he was going to see another pitch. Yeah, that's when you need to be a, a better actor. Yes, but I think. Oh, jump around, grab your wrist, oh, fall on the ground. Absolutely. Well, I think he's doing the old <laughs> rope dope here. He's looking for two or three RBIs, not one. I think that just plain hit the bat. It's a bad break because it would have been ball four. Now it's a full count. Everybody can run. Maybe he can deliver. Crushing double here in score three. Crowd on its feet in Houston. They're nursing a one nothing lead. Start to holler again. Three balls, two strikes. Maddox, Walker, Martinez aboard. Here comes the payoff pitch. Fly ball, right center field. Lane's coming on. He's under it, and the Cubs leave him loaded. Middle of the game. Houston by a run. What's here to do in Philly? Oh, boy. Well, I guess they want to come over and see the Liberty Bell. You got the Liberty Bell. We have the Liberty Bell. Pretzels. The National Constitution Museum. There's lots of theater. There's excellent restaurants. Well, there's a lot, a lot of culture here. It's like a baby New York. For me, it's the... Cheesesteak. 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 
Now there's another great reason to go to Philly. Fly into Philadelphia International Airport for just $99 on Southwest Airlines. I love Philadelphia. You are now free to move about the country. John and Tom are regular guys. They do the usual things, the usual way, at the usual places. One day, John was down at the credit union when he decided to go unusual. Tom also did something he'd never done before. The usual? No, I'll have one of those. Good on you, Tom. Don't make it the usual. Make it Mike's Hard Cranberry Lemonade. Hardly the usual. Don't buy another SUV before you check out the Hyundai Santa Fe. Inside, tons of space and lots of standard features, all for $4,400 less than a Toyota Highlander when comparably equipped. And outside, great looks powered by an available 3.5-liter V6 with reliability backed by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. The Hyundai Santa Fe starting at just $17,334 with utility package. With Hyundai, you win. Get a 2004 Santa Fe with $17,50 cash back or 0% APR. Comcast is working hard, so you won't miss a moment. We're working hard to bring you crystal clear pictures with digital cable. We're working hard to bring you high-speed cable internet. And at Comcast, our promise is to continue bringing new technologies home to you first, to keep you in touch, informed, and in sync with everything you need to stay connected, now and in the future. All from one single source, Comcast. Back in Houston, Chip Carey, Steve Stone, a nice pitcher's duel. Unfortunately, Stoney, the Cubs down 1-0. Houston scores the game's first run in the first. Moments ago, they left the bags full. Houston's bullpen has really had some problems because they've been overused. And the way Redding has thrown, you figure they're going to get into the bullpen. The Cubs tried to break through. A little wildness on the part of Tim Redding, but he made a big pitch to Alou when he had to. So Maddox, who had to run the bases a long time in the top of the fifth, now to the mound for the bottom half. And he will face his opponent, Tim Redding, here, who struck out swinging his one and only time up there. Greg jumps ahead of him quickly with a swinging second strike. Greg's been able to minimize the damage. He gave him three hits, just one run in the first, two hits, and no runs in the fourth. Here comes the 0-2 pitch, and down swinging goes Redding. Four strikeouts for Maddox. Good start to the fifth inning. Let's see if he can tame Biggio now. <laughs> Oakland failed to score in the first inning tonight. They are in St. Louis. As you know, Albert Pujols starting at first base again. Said he hates the DH, doesn't know how Edgar Martinez has been able to do it all those years for Seattle. A chopper foul past third. Gene Lamont will make the pickup. For a long time, Frank Thomas of the Sox said the same thing, that DH was very difficult because you don't have a chance to keep your body loose. In the National League, of course, you don't have to worry about that. It's the loosest league around. Not going to do it. Strike one, now <laughs> strike two. Nothing and two, the count to the Astros center fielder, Craig Biggio. Pitching matchup, as Gail told you earlier in that one, is Harden against Marquis. That ball dumped down the left field line, but Moises will have a play. Well, did you see Biggio try to bring his hands in? Most unusual swing. He knew that ball was too close to take. He could really get nothing on it and floated it to left field. You've heard the term emergency hack. I would think that would apply. That's exactly what it is. Take a look at Biggio. Maddox wants it inside. Biggio trying to get him out of his kitchen. Lazy fly to left. Vizcaino with a sacrifice. And a fly ball out. Little slow roller to short. Maddox has a very quick bottom half of the fifth. Let's get Tim Redding into the lost column. Part of the order coming up. 
Toyota's summer tent event is on, and now's a great time to get a new SUV. Sequoia, Forerunner, Highlander, RAV4. Hurry now for big savings on Toyota's great lineup of five SUVs. I don't want to spend a lot of money. Get zero financing for 36 months on a new 04 Highlander, or go for 1.9 financing on a new RAV4. Both have the lowest fuel costs in their class. So hurry to Toyota's summer tent event and save. Cash, dinero, mula. <laughs> on now at your Toyota dealer. Father told me great tales of you, Arthur and his knights. On July 7th, discover the true story of one man. It is said he has never been defeated in battle. Born to be a knight. To freedom! And destined to be king. These people need a leader. Guide my hand, Excalibur. I am ready. From Jerry Bruckheimer, producer of Pirates of the Caribbean. King Arthur, directed by Antoine Fuqua. Hey Cubs fans, looking for a new way to get to Wrigley Field? Try riding your bike. There are several bike racks surrounding the ballpark, or drop off your bike worry-free at our bike check service. Located on the corner of Clark and Waveland, your bike will be attended to in our private lot at no charge. If you can't ride a bike, remember, public transportation is the best way to get to Wrigley Field. For more information, visit www.cubs.com. Ron Santo. All Chicagoans admire him for his brilliant career at third base and as today's broadcast voice of the Cubs. No wonder he always draws a crowd. Can I have your autograph? What other reason could there be? They like my Chevy. Right now, current GM owners and lessees can get $5,000 loyalty cash on a 2004 Chevy Tahoe. Mr. Santo, can I drive your Chevy? See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Steve, 1984 was Ryan Sandberg's MVP year. It was also a very interesting novel by George Orwell. On Wednesday, June 30th, the first 20,000 fans get a scratch and win card. 100 random winners get a Mitchell and Ness Cooperstown Authentic Collection. 1984 Ryan Sandberg home jersey. Compliments of Red Baron frozen pizza. And Mitchell and Ness does a great job on those jerseys. Doesn't matter what era you want, they've got same material the exact same jersey and they're just beautiful we've had a number of those days at Wrigley Field they've been wildly successful and the big advantage is if you're not one of the lucky hundred you can get them at the souvenir stand and they make wonderful gifts and I do believe Father's Day is right around the corner you are exactly right one ball one strike to Ramirez who pops it back toward us and out of play another way you can get a jersey is through a second chance drawing that ball game on June 30th. No purchase is necessary. And for complete rules, visit Cubs.com. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Steve Stone jersey day. There's with so many teams that it would take up a season and a half. You could have like Gaylord Perry's jersey with all the different so logos. many numbers. Well, a lot of people wanted you. That's where you got to look at it, pal. Two balls, two strikes. Hard hit ball right to Vizcaino. To an A, he goes for out number one. That was a sinking line drive as Ramirez, who's hit the ball very hard twice, probably hit the ball harder in that at bat, but has little to show for it. Jose Vizcaino right in the way. Todd Hollinsworth 0 for 2 tonight. And you see the great reaction on Ensberg as he roots on Vizcaino. Think he's going to hit a home run tonight? Collinsworth? I sure hope he does. I think he's got a good chance this time. He hit the ball very well in the first inning. Flying out deep to right center field. Pulled that ball a little more, would have been out. 1 0 count to him. Long way the other way. You mentioned he's got two more starts, at least in right field. Dusty Baker has said as productive as Todd has been. His desire to keep Corey Patterson's legs fresh. Remember Corey coming back after major knee surgery a year ago. Hollinsworth has spent some time in center field for the Cubs, too. He can play a lot of different places, and he's tremendously valuable off the bench. You can start him, certainly, but when you take him off the bench, your bench gets a little weaker. With Sammy back, Dusty will have a world of options. And with Grozelonic back, there'll be some tough decisions for Jim Hendry. 
Hard hit ball to the left side, but they had him played perfectly. Ensburg gets Hollinsworth, who hustles down the line. It is out number two. Speaking of Sammy Sosa, he's the subject of our Geico quote. Good to see Mr. Sosa back in right field for the Cubs. Well, the one thing he doesn't want to see is the same type of rain he saw yes. at Jackson. Because he saw a whole lot of it as the East has been getting deluged. Two outs for Derek Lee. Redding pitched himself into and out of a big jam. Toughest break in the game for the Cubs. Came on what turned out to be strike two to Moises Alou. It was a bad ball that he tipped away, couldn't get the bat out of the way. Could have played at the time run. That ball hammered deep center field. Pidgeo, though, is going to have a play. Deepest part of the park, too deep for Derek Lee and the Cubs in the sixth. Three up, three down, still one to nothing, Houston. Try Arby's new Market Fresh Wraps. Tender, fresh sliced meats, authentic cheeses, and tasty sauces. Made fresh when ordered on a low-carb wrap. Counting carbs never tasted so good. You can elect to go left. You can elect to go right. Or you can be an independent. Summer Jam. Join the party now at your Cadillac dealer. Cadillac. Breakthrough. Take advantage of 0% APR financing toward any new 2004 Cadillac Escalade model at your Cadillac dealer. It's sure to be a battle to the finish when Frank Thomas and the Sox take on Mike Lowell and the world champion Marlins. Interleague play presented by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Choices. That's the big difference at Jacobs Twin Auto Plaza. Choose from quality makes. Ford, Mazda, Hyundai, Pontiac, and Buick. Choose from over 60 different models. Then, after you choose a vehicle, Jacobs Twin makes it affordable. Chicagoland loves choices. That's why more smart buyers choose Jacobs Twin Auto Plaza. 6750 West Grand Avenue. You always win at Jacobs Twin. Putting people first means building an SUV that allows you to go pretty much anywhere and see pretty much everything. Like the highly adaptable Saturn View with more standard features than the competition. Now for a limited time at Team Saturn, you can lease a new, fully equipped 04 Saturn View for just $209 a month with zero due at signing. Get in and get away in a new Saturn View. Lease one for just $209 a month from Saturn of Elmhurst, 505 West Grand Avenue in Elmhurst. Saturn, people first. Wednesdays presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. After our game, we'll have the Cubs post-game show with all the highlights and analysis of game three of the series. Gail and Dave are standing by with the Cubs post-game show here on Fox Sports. Net. This figures to be a tough inning for Maddox. If he can get through this one, he should be in pretty good shape. But you have to go through the heart of the order. The heart of the order that's produced four of the six hits for the Astros. Berkman first out of the shoot. He has the game's lone run batted in. And the ball misses upstairs to him. It's a funny game. Tim Reddick had come in allowing nine earned runs in nine and a third innings in his two starts this month. Through six, he's given up just five hits to the Cubs. Has gone where he doesn't normally go. And that is into the seventh inning as a starter tonight. The longer you go, the better the matchups for Jimmy Williams in that pen. One guy I would prefer not seeing would be Brad Lidge, who's throwing the ball as well as anybody in the league right now. And taking nothing away from Dotel. The way Lidge is throwing the ball, I might give him a crack at the ninth inning. He's got nasty stuff. He's got one save this year. He can blow a save just as well as Dotel, I would imagine. So, innings tonight can make that pen irrelevant. Well, last night the pen was terrific. Merker, Belton, Farnsworth, and Hawkins, and it turned into a win. 
That's a call third over the outside corner. Addicts got the corner to the left hand hitter that time. Berkman argues and is two for three. It's also the first down at the bottom of the sixth. That might have been a result of Paul Bacco lobbying with Darren Spagnardi. He sets up away. Maddox gets it oh, a good four inches off the outside corner. How tough is Maddox to umpire? We've talked how tough this staff can be to catch. If you're a young umpire like Spagnardi, your estimation, what do you think? I think he's real easy to call because he's always around the plate. Just a question of how much you're going to give him on the corners. Popped up out of play by Jeff Kent. Strike one. You'll look at most good catchers, and when they're sitting outside, right-hand pitcher to right-hand hitter, they're going to put just the outside of the glove on the outside corner. It actually gives you two or three inches where the catcher doesn't have to move his glove. Same thing when he moves on the other side of the plate. He'll put the thumb part of his glove just over the corner to get the pitcher another few inches when you hit the glove so he doesn't have to move it. That ball exploding down from Jeff Kent. 0 and 2 your count. Well, just as big an art as it is in making that baseball dance, it's as big an art in framing that pitch for the umpire. Rocco does it as well with Maddox as anybody we've seen. One and two year count. A one to nothing Houston nail biter here in the sixth. Two off speed pitches missed. I figure Maddox would. Try one of those fastballs that starts outside and tries to shave off the outside corner. Two and two. That ball couldn't hang on. It's tipped at the plate. White Sox down four nothing in Florida tonight. That game goes to the seventh. Pavano and Schoenweiss, the starters down in South Florida this evening. Line drive, picked by Maddox. And Kent flips away the helmet and the bat in disbelief. Greg's had a good night with the glove on that mound. When you throw a lot of sinkers, you have to be ready for the ball to come back to you because when you keep it away from hitters, especially guys that like to pull the ball, they hit it right back up the middle. And so Maddox as the fifth infielder when he lets the ball go shows you why there are 13 gold gloves among his many accomplishments. Oh, perfect night for Bagwell tonight. He's two for two. Looking ahead to the seventh. Patterson, Baco, and Maddox's spot due. No balls and a strike to Bagwell. Line drive, he's three for three. Well, Maddox doesn't have a good matchup with Bagwell for the simple reason that Bagwell is fairly weak on fastballs around letter high. He'll swing through him because of the uppercut swing. That's not the strength of Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox has to depend on keeping the ball down somewhat. And Bagwell hits those as the three for three would indicate. Ensberg has an infield hit tonight. Had a bouncing ball in the hole that Ramon stopped and had no play to make. 20 RBIs for the young Astros third baseman. And a fly ball into left center field. Shallowly hit. Patterson a great jump. Outruns the baseball and sends this game into the seventh inning. And Correa lead it off down one to nothing. Behind the Heineken. Get two free downloads from Real with every specially marked 12 pack of Heineken. No purchase required. See store display or Heineken.com for details. While supplies last. A new Ford SUV, an ultra thin TV. Now get more at your Ford store with a new Ford SUV. TV's free, the widescreen TV's free, the screen is flat, can you hang with that? The widescreen TV's free. Get zero 
for 60 or choose 3,000 to 4,000 cash back. Plus, current Ford owners get an extra thousand on Explore. All that in a free Dell HD Ready LCD TV. This just in, eight, six, six, four. Falco. <laughs> Call 8664-FPL. DCO. If you're a candidate for new windows, call Feldco. Call 866 for Feldco. Feldco replacement windows stand for top quality at a low factory direct price. Over 100,000 Chicagoland customers have chosen Feldco. Make the right call today. Call 866 for Feldco. Robert Morris College is one of the largest private colleges in the state. We awarded more bachelor's degrees in business management than any other private college in Illinois. A school where everything is cooking. Where students design a path towards their future and turn their dreams into reality. A college that will test one's inner strength and create a competitive attitude. It all leads to a collegiate experience that's like no other. Robert Morris College. Real college for the real world. Well, Steve, this game's pretty easy to summarize. Houston gets a first inning run, and Tim Redding has made it stand up to this point. Well, your summary is right on the butt, and that's the Ford game summary, and you did it exceptionally well. And without a whole lot of offense, there's not much to highlight. Patterson, a butt try, and it's thrown into right field. Patterson's going to head to second. It'll you talked about it. It'll be hitting in air. You talked about him butting before the game, and it opens the door to tie it here in the seventh inning. It is a base hit in an air. He lays down a perfect bunt, and Osmus just throws it away. You don't want to throw that one to the inside part of the bag. It's the third error of the year. And that's a tying run out at second. Let's see what Baco can do now. You have the pitcher spot, then you have Walker coming up. The bullpen is starting to loosen up here. Baco requests time. Well, Baco's got to get Corey over to third. Maddox, decent hitting pitcher. Beltran loosening up. Bunt single and a throwing air as the Cubs in business here. Baco bunts toward third and foul. Strike one. Bunted a little bit hard, but he left Ensberg with only one play if that ball was in fair territory. Now in Anaheim, it would have been. Yes, it would have been. But they don't bank the foul lines here. So Bullinger and Gallo throwing in the pen. It's neither Ernest nor Julio, but Mike Gallo. Who does no wine before it's time. No balls and a strike to Baco. One nothing. Houston has a seventh inning lead. He took a strike. Going two. Ensberg has to be really careful at third base. Now he's off the line, but he has to respect the fact that Patterson is the Cubs running attack. And so far, Vizcaino has been the guy that's chased him back at second because they're playing Baco up the middle. A two strike pitch. A little high, one ball, two strikes now. That fastball at 91 miles an hour. Reading's velocity. Starting to wane as he tires into this seventh inning. The season high in innings pitched was seven in the third. He did that against the Cardinals May 30th. Two and two. Cubs wouldn't mind if Baco reached with out surrendering and out. Then you'd almost certainly have Maddox bunting. Then the top of the order giving the Cubs a potential chance to take the lead. Paco's got to reach first. Greg swung the bat and thrown the ball beautifully tonight. Line drive right field base hit. That's going to tie. 
of this game. Patterson around third. Lane has problems, and Baco on his way to second with nobody out. It's a 1-1 game on a Baco rocket to right. laid off two high fastballs finally getting something on the inner portion that was supposed to be a little bit higher and Baco able to turn on it Lane on the sliding attempt but Baco cruises into second base with his fourth double and his third run driven in so the Astros think Maddox is going to bunt he doesn't show it and Bagwell almost fell down but he put the brakes on it first the Cubs have tied the game in the seventh. One ball, no strikes. Greg bunts it beautifully toward third. And the throw to first is in plenty of time. Another example of how Steve, a National League pitcher, can help himself win a lot of ball games here. Well, Greg Maddox with a hit, a walk, and now a sacrifice, having a perfect night at bat. Fielded his position. He's thrown the ball very well, and now he gets down the sacrifice. So you're seeing just about every aspect of the game of Greg Maddox. And that's the go-ahead run 90 feet away, courtesy of that bunt. And here comes Jimmy Williams, and you would think that that would be it for Redding, who is in unfamiliar territory, pitch count and innings-wise. And Jimmy looking down to that pen. He has Gallo, the left-hander, available for Todd Walker. If he decides to make the move here, a bunt single, a throwing error, a Baco double, and now a sacrifice has the game not only tied, but the go-ahead run 90 feet away and only one out. What is Williams asking his starting pitcher in this situation, would you guess? Do you have enough left? And eventually, Darren Spagnardi goes out to speed it along. So told him to be alert for the suicide, but I don't think you're going to see it with Todd Walker up. He's been swinging the bat too well. So the arms in the outfield, you run on Berkman every chance you get. You run on BGO. Lane has a decent arm, not quite as good as Hidalgo, however. Infield in for Todd Walker now with one out. Game tied 1-1. One, one. And that sinks low, ball one. Williams has been criticized in this town for pulling his starters too early. He's staying with Redding here in the seventh. Fly ball hammered left field. That's going to be deep enough. Berkman on a full run. What a catch. What a catch by Berkman to rob Todd Walker. But tagging easily at third is Paco. The Cubs lead by a run. That was a great catch. This seventh inning. Well, the Cubs had a choice. They'll take the misplay last night in the ninth and this catch in the seventh because this catch, as good as it is, and it's a dandy, allows the Cubs to take the lead. So Berkman just trying to rob Walker of a double and good heads up base running as you tag up and score easily. So the bases are clear. Two runs in for the Cubs, and Ramon Martinez is the batter. Talk about manufacturing some offense. The Cubs used a weapon they haven't used a lot, Corey Patterson's speed. And then some consistent contact here in the seventh inning to jump back in front. Also took advantage of an error, and good teams will do that. And with Redding due up third in the seventh, maybe that had something to do with Jimmy Williams leaving him in. It's like throwing 100 pitches. One ball, one strike. All too low. I don't think he'll leave him in if he doesn't get Martinez. He seems to be a bit of a dying horse on the hill. He's throwing the ball well, but. Seems to be running out of steam. Three and one is the count here. You win the first game of the series against Roger Clemens, you get greedy. 
You find a way to win game two, you get even greedier. You want to win this one tonight. Still a ways to go in Houston, however. The pitch is popped up toward us and well out of play. Full count to Ramon Martinez. center field Berkman's not going to cut that off and that catch looking huge now Ramon's got two and he'll pull into second with another Cub two out hit I would be shocked if Redding survives this particular inning he's starting to get tattooed by the Cubs Jimmy Williams shaking his head he might be second guessing himself but not bringing in the left hander to face Walker and if Alou gets a base hit here, Jimmy Williams will be shaking his head enough to maybe injure himself. That's the catch 22 that is managing in the major leagues. As Alou swings and misses. If you take the man out too early and the bullpen has problems, people get on your case. If you leave your starter in, show some faith in him, and he gives it up in the mid to late innings, people say, why didn't you go to your bullpen? And that's the conundrum Jimmy Williams finds himself in in tonight's game as well. One strike to Alu. Well, Jimmy is right at the 899 as far as wins are concerned. Next win at 900 will put him in some elite company. But the Cubs don't want to see him get that till they leave town and they've done a pretty good job of it in this series. One ball one strike. To Moises Alou. No better sound in Major League Baseball than a home crowd quiet when you're the visiting team. That's what the Cubs have done for the third straight night to this point. That just missed. The Reddings continue to fall behind. And this is very uncharacteristic for Jimmy Williams. You know he has a tired bullpen. The Cubs have one of those also. But he'll be fortunate to get out of this with just a two to one deficit. He's got to make a tough pitch to a real tough hitter. Two balls and a strike. Now an even tougher offering. Not the same looking at number 51 for this Houston team as it was back in 1998-99. Randy Johnson was here with that Houston ball club. A pretty good second half that year. Three balls, one strike to Moises Alou. Does he have another two out hit in him tonight? Writing the look of a man who doesn't really relish making this pitch. This might be the last batter he's going to face, regardless of the resolution of this at bat. Raymond leads from second to 3 1. Pulled hard toward third. Innsberg gobbles it up. That's a good play and a run saver. That'll retire the side. The Cubs, though, take the lead with a two run top of the seventh inning behind Greg Maddox. Time waits for no man. Neither do airplanes. I want a little bit of paradise on the fast track. Get the United Mileage Plus Visa card only from Bank One. I want a card with the miles pour in. A mile for every dollar I spend. I want to be on my way to the island sooner rather than later. Surf's off! Get 15,000 bonus miles after your first purchase. I want 15,000 miles now. I don't have time to accrue. What kind of word is accrue? I don't know. Do you like accruing? Get the more miles every day card from the Bank One card collection. Apply now. He's spreading the cheer. Max, this is not the DMV, all right? He's sharing the joy. I'm on my lunch break, okay? And breaking into stores everywhere on DVD. Exactly. With extras that will knock you out. Ah! 
You don't hit in the... What's wrong with you? It's just a... Oh, I told you I didn't want to do this. Huh? Oh, good. Oh. Bad Santa. Love large women. Can't do squat about that, Jack. Only on DVD Tuesday, June 22nd. Also available for the first time, Batter Santa. Frog. Frog. Etiqueta Barcelona, Barcelona. Via pro Barcelona, Barcelona. Barcelona. The Barcelona. Chevy. According to J.D. Power & Associates, we're ranked number one in customer retention. That means more people who own Chevy stay with Chevy. When it comes to satisfaction, we've got a lot to offer. And now current GM owners and lessees get $4,000 loyalty cash on select 2004 Chevy Silverado models. Chevy, turn the key, start a revolution. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Father's Day is coming up this weekend, and the perfect Father's Day gift is Wrigley Field, a celebration of the friendly confines. This great photographic reminiscence of baseball's greatest ballpark is available online at Cubs.com. The image is shot by the official Cub photographer, Steve Green. Pick it up in time for Father's Day. As we move to the bottom of our seventh inning, Lane rolls out on the first Maddox pitch. Cubs lead it now, two to one, with Osmus coming up. Osmus has played Pepper with Maddox twice and is 0 for two. It's like Richard Hidalgo in the on deck circle. The night for Reading is done. Cubs leading 2 1. A late called strike. Osmus shaking his head. There's Hidalgo, the man rumored to be on the block for Houston. That may or may not be the case. We do know, however, he is on deck here late. Oh, no, he is on the block. The question is where he's going to go. And the Astros will pick up some of the money. How much will determine just exactly what you get in return? You pick up a lot of it. You get a middle of the road prospect. You pick up a little of it. Well, just vice versa. You pick up a lot of the money, you get a real good prospect. You pick up a little of it, you get a middle of the road prospect. A name that was in the New York newspapers potentially linked with Hidalgo's potential move to the Mets might have been David Weathers, a relief pitcher in that New York pen. Two balls and a strike to Osmus. Greg upset with the last three tosses he's made. Three balls and a strike. Late inning walks in one run games as you and Greg know. Are often problematic. You want to face a doggo with nobody on because he's killed Maddox during the course of his career. Osmus thought that was low. It's a full count. Three balls, two strikes. I think that's one of the things. Jimmy Williams has been waiting for the Hidalgo Maddox matchup in a key situation in the game. Here comes the payoff pitch. He just got a piece to stay alive. Cardinals lead Oakland in St. Louis three to nothing after two and a half. Reds have taken a 3-2 lead over Texas. That game at the Great American Ballpark. Pull toward third. Ramirez off his glove. Shallow left center field. Better hustle and pick up the ball. Alou does a nice job backing up that play. And Osmus is aboard with a seventh inning single. And Hidalgo indeed will be announced. Well, Osmus took that turn fairly aggressively but Moise is hustling on the play made sure that he couldn't make it to second base Ramirez comes up a little short and with Osmus having decent speed Moise is getting it back in so now they're going to give the bullpen a chance to get loose as they meet at the mound 
access to get himself by Richard Hidalgo, something he's had a real hard time doing in the past. Reminger tips his cap. Beltran, a cool drink of water in that bullpen. They've been up for a while down there. Let's see if Larry Rothschild pops out, and indeed the Cubs pitching coach will do so in a critical seventh inning situation here. It's or even at eight. Houston's committed the game's only defensive mistake. And the Cubs lead in the run column by a 2 1 score at this point. They're going to go to the bullpen, and I think Greg Maddox is a little surprised. Usually when you see Larry Rothschild come out there they don't go to the pen but maybe Maddox just said look I'm gassed. He threw a great game again tonight. Maddox will depart with the lead. Let's see if the Cubs pen can get the job done again here in Houston Texas. Tick, tick, tick goes the internal time clock of the small business owner. Every chime, every click, every chirp, money. So it's only fair if we want 15 minutes of your time, we consider buying it. Introducing the SBC 1550 promise. In 15 minutes, we'll show you how to save money with our new SBC pricing. Or if we can't, we'll thank you for your time and give you $50. 800-799-1550. Seeing small business differently. SBC. The ML350 Special Edition, with features like elegant running boards, 17-inch alloy wheels, and a matte burl birch wood-trimmed interior. Mom? A package so perfect, you'll want to keep it that way. Value unlike any other. Frankie, Bernie. I see you got a new lottery machine, huh? No, this is from 1974. No, I thought I'd show it off for the 30th anniversary. Man, let me check it out. One more time. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Guess some things never go out of style. Wow. Expect the unexpected. The Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. go to the bullpen and Francis Beltran is on to face Hidalgo. Francis pitched in last night's game pitched the third of an inning. He walked two in that one didn't give up any runs. And he's got the game on the bases. Brad Osmus representing the tying run and so Jimmy Williams won't get the Maddox Hidalgo matchup. No matchup against Beltran who has a fastball at 96 97. And a good split finger to go with it. Hidalgo, as we've told you during this series, has been bothered by a sore neck. He hurt that making a diving play in Milwaukee. That was at the end of the long road trip for the Houston team. So he'll hit here with a man on in the seventh inning. Cubs protecting a one run lead late. to Hidalgo one ball no strikes uh -oh. all two Biggio waiting next Rick Maddox in line to win his sixth of the year if Beltran can get through this seventh inning. is going to have a play on the track. Ballpark just big enough. Any place else, we might have had big problems. Here, it's out number two. Even with the roof open, that one didn't seem all that lively. Hidalgo hit it a long way, but fortunately, Corey coasted under it. He felt he had it all the way. And it's a long, loud fly ball. But everybody quiet now as Biggio stands in. He doubled and scored the lone Houston run. That was back in the first. And this Astro team, 25 runs in their last 10 games coming into play tonight. Biggio 
takes a high strike. Well, that was a real high strike. I don't think Biggio can believe it. He doesn't look back. But that one looked like it came above the logo. Watch it again. Wow. Yes, the bottom of the chin is the new strike zone. Well, to his credit, Biggio didn't argue. He said a lot without saying a word. He's got the rest of this at bat. He doesn't want to see another one called up there. One strike to count to him here. Osmus at first. Beltron wanted that pitch. Maybe an equalizer there. One ball, one strike. For the Astros leadoff man. Off Blanco's mask. More good news regarding Kerry Wood today, Steve. He threw 30 odd pitches, 32, I think. We had a side session today from the mound. It was divided into two 16 pitch sequences to simulate an innings worth of work. And Kerry's going to make a simulated game start for the Cubs here in the next couple of days. Then they'll figure out when and where to rehab him. Get him back. Osmus running. The pitch fouled away at the plate off Biggio's body, and he takes a tumbling turn as he walks it off down the first baseline. We'll take another look at it. That looked like the split finger, and Biggio stroked it straight down on the foot. Should slow him down a little. Ball, two strikes. Very quickly and quietly, by the way, Steve Francis Beltron has pitched himself into some pretty big ball games for this Cub team. Has he shown a lot of a lot of faith in this young man? When he first came up, he was put in the games that were out of hand. Now he's in games like this. Runner goes, pitch high, throw low, and not in time. Second steal of the year for Osmus. And the importance of that play self-evident. A hit from Biggio could potentially tie this game. And you really can't afford to play in too far because late in the game you want to play no doubles. Osman, Osmus one of the few catchers who will run. The throw is not a good one. And if you have to come up with a ball in the dirt, usually a guy will slide under the tag. Two balls, two strikes to Biggio. Paco smothers that. Liz Cayeno's the man waiting next. Let's worry about him in the eighth inning. Here comes the three two. Two out. Well, I worry much more about Viscano than I do about Biggio in that situation. Here comes Dusty. And he probably wants to turn Viscano around to the right side where he's not near as effective. So the walk issued. That will be it for Beltran. And it looks like Remlinger coming in the game. So Beltron faces two. He retires one. The Astros still are alive in this seventh inning. They're down two to one with two on and two out. So I finally figured out my major, ceramics. Nice. It's not even so much a major. It's more like like a life calling. Like a Zen thing. Yeah, you know, it's just like it's like me and the wheel. You're really doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, man. I see myself living off the grid in a yurt, making plates in ten years. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Grazie. Thank you. Thank you. You can always minor in ceramics. Yeah. The Range Rover by Land Rover. 16-inch softball is a Chicago institution. And Danley is a Chicago institution. 
Deep Dish Pizza is a Chicago institution. Chicago institution. Since 1959, it's Danley's Garage World for the finest garages. Now you can own a Danley and get $1,000 off if you call now. 773 Garages. Call 773 Garages and get $1,000 off any new Danley. Danley, truly a Chicago institution. Danley's Garage World. Danley. Depend on Danley. Gentlemen, I am back with the castles. We got burgers, cheeseburgers, you name it. Man. Oh, yes. <laughs> Check this out. I got the new chicken breast sandwich. Chicken, chicken breast sandwich. sandwich. Chicken <laughs> breast sandwich. Hold this. <laughs> Thank you. The new chicken breast sandwich from White Castle. Tender, juicy, and draped in cheese. It's the best thing to hit our bun since the burger. White Castle, what you crave. Tonight's Buick Opinion Poll asks who's been the most effective leadoff hitter in the National League Central this year. There are your choices. Log on to FSNChicago.com. Gail and Abel have the results for you on the Cubs postgame show. Leadoff man tonight. Greg Biggio on base twice for Houston. Todd Walker once for the Cubs, but Todd also an RBI. So that duel apparently even. Let's see if Mike Remlinger can keep the game from being even. The Cubs are in front. Two on, two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Remlinger, no record in ERA. Pretty well up there on for the 11th time. And the reason to bring in Remlinger is you turn Viscano around from the right side. And he's three for nine against Remlinger lifetime. Given up anything the last couple of times out. He debuted this season against the Astros May 25th. And it was his first game off the disabled list while recovering from off-season shoulder surgery. Is Kaino 0 for 2 with a sacrifice so far tonight. And a check swing back to the mound. How about that? See you later, Houston. We go to the eighth inning. And the Cubs maintain their 2-1 lead. Greg Maddox in line to win it. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Cadillac. Bold vehicles defying convention. Robert Morris, real college for the real world. And by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. After my divorce, I was faced with dating again. And um, I wondered if women would still find me attractive. I've been dating a whole lot now, and I've really noticed a difference. Girls pay a lot of attention to me. Hello, I'm Dr. John Parker. Hair loss is an all-too-common problem, but finally there's good news. The Parker solution to hair loss? No. I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Whether you like Jack Daniels mixed, straight, or on the rocks, there's really only one way to drink it, responsibly. Announcing Nissan's full-size sales event, featuring the Titan, Nissan's new full-size truck. Get a full-size engine, the most powerful standard V8 in its class. Full-size towing, up to 9,500 pounds. Full-size ground clearance, best in class. For the first time ever, 1.9 financing for 60 full months or 1,000 cash back on Titan during Nissan's full-size sales event, now through July 6th. One more here in Houston. That'll be tomorrow night on WGN Sports. Then we've got the Oakland A's in town over the weekend. Then after an off day on June 21st, we head down to St. Louis for three with the division leading Cardinals that the upcoming Cubs schedule presented by Kraft Eye Institute. Into the pen again goes Jimmy Williams tonight. Dan Maselli is on to pitch. He will face Aramis Ramirez, Todd Hollinsworth, and Derek Lee. So Maselli in the eighth in relief of Tim Redding who went seven innings eight hits two runs two walks and one strikeout. A couple pen spotless to this point. A little more breathing room would be nice with the thunderous bats for the Cubs coming up. Maselli has been a busy man out of their pen and a much improved year for him. He credits an off-season workout regimen that 
You don't hear I've done too much by Major League Baseball players. Well, it's just me and him probably are the only two. TKD are your middle initials, as we all know. Selly got involved in Taekwondo in the offseason, and it's added three or four miles an hour to his fastball. He's always had a good split finger pitch. And I eat at a lot of Thai restaurants. Broken back. Jeff Kent can't get it. It's into center field and a leadoff hit, a three hit game for Aramis. The moment it looked like Kent was going to be able to knock that one down at the very least. But the ball got by him. Nothing against Station Cuisine. Let's hope we see no ties late. Bat shatters. And Kent just has it elude him. So there is an insurance run for not Todd Allensworth. Six three hit games for Ramirez this year, two four hit games for him this season. Hollinsworth looking to join the hit parade tonight. He's 0 for 3. High fly ball belted right center field. Biggio on the run at the track. At the hill. He can't make the play. The ball dropped. He can't find it. Ramirez around third. He'll get the green light. There'll be no relay. And the Cubs take advantage of Towels Hill again. Well, I know there's one man in center field who hates Towels Hill, and that's Biggio. He ran back, and as soon as you start up, you lose your depth perception. It's the only place in the major leagues where you have to run straight up after drifting back 415 feet. Bijo's got a shot at this one. And just as he starts to get to the hill on the slope, he just falls down. And Hollinsworth drives in a big run on a triple. His first triple of the year, the infield. Playing halfway for Houston now with Derek Leah. The Cubs take a 3 1 lead, and the, this Cub offense has chased Biggio from pillar to post out in center field all series long. They've hit the ball a long way. They would have had a whole lot of home runs in other ballparks, just not this one. So a broken bat squibber through the infield and a long triple. Puts the Cubs in front. And Derek, an inside out swing down two quick strikes here. If the Cubs build on and hang on to this lead, it would be win number 295 for Greg Maddox lifetime. But still six outs to get here in Houston C. The 0 2 pitch. This is low. Texas ties the Reds 3-3 in the seventh inning in Cincinnati. Cardinals still lead Oakland 3-0 after four. You notice the Cubs have five hits in the last one plus innings as the visibility has gotten better. Remember this was a six o'clock start here. The hitters now starting to see the ball real well. It's a one, different world. One two pitch is off the plate. Two and two. I know you had mentioned that taking nothing away from your stuff when you pitched in the all star game in Los Angeles. That was a wonderful pitching advantage. And the same thing we saw in Anaheim and the same thing here with the six o'clock start. This ability is tough. High fly ball toward left field. That should be deep enough. Berkman drifts back. Hollinsworth with good speed tags and is going to score just ahead of the throw. Heck of an effort. Berkman on the warning track in left, but give Derek Lee RBI number 40. It's a two run eighth and a three run lead. It's a very short left field, so even though Berkman is back by the track, he muscles up, throws a rainbow, and Hollinsworth beats the play. So Dan Maselli works a third of an inning, gives up a couple of hits, and two earned runs. The Cubs extend their lead. It's four to one. Into the Astros pen goes Jimmy Williams, and Mike Gallo strides in. driver spends a mere 1% of the time in reverse. 
Yet considering what's at stake, that's 1% we didn't want to ignore. The backup camera, available in the Lexus RX 330. At your Chicago area Lexus dealer, Get two free downloads from Real with every specially marked 12 pack of Heineken. No purchase required. See store display or Heineken.com for details. While supplies last. No Bugsy in our line of work. I'm glad we have that insurance. Uh, what insurance, Doc? Meep, meep. <laughs> nope, that's not it. <laughs> the one that pays you cash if you get hurt and can't work. And that's. It's right on the tip of my bill. Meep, meep. <laughs> Flapjack. Aflac! Aflac. Ask about it at work. Aflac! Tink, I knew the name all along. Lefty lefty matchup with Corey Patterson to face Mike Gallo here in the two run Cub eighth. Pull toward first and inside the bag. Fair. The Cubs are wearing out the Houston bullpen. Corey's going to turn on the afterburners. He'll round second. He way to third with a one-out triple. Two of them in the inning for the Cubs. Triple number three for Corey Patterson. When he saw it go down the line, he had to play ahead of him. And he knew that Lane was going to have some problems in the corner. So he took advantage of it. He's got a butt hit. Now he has a triple to his credit. And what tremendous speed he has. And the plays are funny like that. You don't even have to pick up the coach. You can see that Lane wasn't going to get it as quickly or as cleanly as he would have liked. So another big insurance run 90 feet away. Let's see if Baco can cash in his second RBI of the night. That would double his season total coming into play. Infield in for him and he looks at the ball inside. One ball no strikes. 11 Cub hits in this game. Jason Dubois in the on deck circle. And the bullpen up and going. One ball, one strike. I mentioned Kerry Wood earlier, Steve. Ryan Dempster also pitching well in a rehab outing. Struck out six and four innings and a third with your beloved Lansing Lugnuts last night. He's on the comeback trail. And it was Baco's big double last inning that helped put the Cubs in business as they've collected six hits in the last inning and a third. Two balls, one strike to Baco. Nowhere near ball three. Three and one. 28 game hitting streak of Carlos Lee goes by the boards. 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. Still, a very notable streak at 28 games. It's a team record for the White Sox, but Florida beat him tonight 4 to nothing behind Carl Pavano. Now Osmus to the mound for a quick chat. out to move the proceedings along here. Well, what a beautiful mid-June night in Houston. I don't think anybody expected this kind of weather. Not in the low 80s to start the ball game. And the roof's been open the entire game. And that beautiful sunset just beyond the All-Star Game logo. Of course, Houston will host it. One count. It's now three and two. Don't forget the importance of the All Star game. The league that wins it gets a potential game seven in the World Series. And the Cubs are hopeful to be the beneficiaries of that. Three balls, two strikes. Patterson at third. Out of 
Play to the left side. Good battle here between Gallo and Baco. A single, two triples, and a sacrifice fly has put the Cubs in front four to one. Jeff Kintz. Tough bit of hitting luck for Baco. That's out number two. And now Du Bois is being called back. And the Cubs will allow Mike Remlinger to hit for himself here. In the bottom of the eighth inning, you'll have Berkman, Kent, and Bagwell. And as we've seen historically, Mike. Much more effective against right-handed hitters than left-hand hitters. As you can see by that average, he hasn't had a chance to hit all that much. In fact, this is going to be his inaugural with the bat this year. One strike the count tonight. And that misses low and away. One and one, your count. Gallo needs to do a little housework on the shoelaces. Tomorrow's pitching matchup, Glendon Rush for the Cubs, Roy Oswald for Houston. Remember, Oswald has had to take a couple of cortisone shots as well. He's had some intercostal muscle problems for the Astro team. And where would the Cubs be without Glendon Rush stepping in and pitching as well as he has in place of both Mark Pryor and Kerry Wood? I would think by looking at the record, it would be three losses short. He's three and one. Lamnager makes a little contact. That ball rolls foul. And Mike will head back to the play. Well, there's an example. If you're a pitcher, you got to come get that ball while it's in fair territory because you know Remlinger is not going to run all that fast and you're going to get the out. By allowing that ball to roll, it rolls foul and Remlinger has another life. Two strikes, two outs, two in for the Cubs. The seventh and the eighth. And down swinging, retires the side. Two triples for the Cubs, plates a pair. And the Cubs have a three run lead entering the bottom of the eighth. Not under the boat now. You got it? You got it? Yeah. Get in. 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 Get Summer sensation. What'll you do in your rendezvous? Will great cash back or a low monthly payment help with your plans? This $2.79 a month lease puts you in the driver's seat of the Rendezvous CX. Call for details. Quality, versatility, and fun. Plus, Rendezvous saves with a sensational 26 miles per gallon highway. Get into summer. Get into Rendezvous at your Buick dealer. to reconfigure. The element from Honda. Grab some body wash from Old Spice. When I walk through a jam, no one knows who I am. Put my love to the test, and I missed a success. It has a dual 
complexion formula so you'll get really clean, smell really great. Hey, Ben. Need help with your anatomy homework? You! Now in Mountain Rush set. Mr. Spice Six. things up. I'm for a Cadillac in-game update. I'm Gail Fisher inside the Fox Sports Net newsroom. Some bad news for the Toronto Blue Jays. They place all-star outfielder Vernon Wells on the 15-day disabled list with a strained right calf. They just activated second baseman Orlando Hudson, but Wells now on the DL. He joins Carlos Delgado, leaving the Blue Jays without their top two power threats. So a big hit for Toronto. Now let's send him back to Houston. Gail, thank you much. Six outs to get. For three wins in Houston and an overall season series tie with the Astros. But it's tough inning. Steve Berkman, Kent, and Bagwell. The advantage for Remlinger, that good straight change is the equalizer against the right hand hitter. One ball, no strikes to Berkman, who's got a couple of hits handed RBI tonight. Consistently called all night tonight. Two and one your count. He's one good ball three. Two balls, two strikes. That was a good changeup. You really can't tell it's a changeup. Looks like the remnants are fastball. That's why he has so many of the hitters out front. The roof open in Houston tonight has not helped the Astros offensive output just one run to this point. I thought he got it there instead it's a full count three balls two strikes. Tonight he had a couple of base hits. That one was up in the zone and out over the plate. That turned into a single. That one was down but still over the middle of the plate. That turned into a single. And then Maddox dropped that little backdoor breaking ball over the outside corner. That was a called third. That was ball four. Eight off walk in the eighth inning. And trouble afoot for the Astros offense. Jeff Kent. Is 0 for 3 in the game. Nobody up in the cup pen. It normally doesn't have a whole lot of luck with Remlinger. What he does do is ground into a whole lot of double plays, 11 of them this year. Well, let's make it 12 in this eighth inning. 4 1 comes leading. Way high, ball one. Now the pen gets busy, and Farnsworth loosens up. Strike. Jeff Kent wants them to check the baseball, so Darren Spagnardi does look at it. And he thought it was pretty good. strike back to the screen another change up Will it go to the well again one and two the count to Jeff Kent
Kent. Be one for 11 in this series. If he does, he's got to keep it low and away to Kent. You've talked a lot about your pitching philosophy with the lead late, with the sluggers coming up. They can hit the ball the opposite way. If he hits it out in right center, just tip your cap to him. Ball two, strike two. I gotta believe that was just a setup fastball. I don't think Remlinger wants to get him out with a fastball. I think he wants to get him out with a straight chain. We'll look in at Paul Baco. That's the outside fastball. Well, we'll see. Chopper hit towards short. Second for one. The turn is not in time. It's thrown errantly, but stays in play for the Cubs. Walker's down at second. And Todd Walker got crushed. That was a slow developing play, and Todd really got rolled hard by an on rushing Lance Berkman. The high hopper, Martinez fed it very deliberately, and Walker had to wait for the baseball. He hung in there and got hit awfully hard in this eighth inning. Well, Todd's trying to do something to turn the double play. You have to stay in there. It's very difficult for a second baseman because he's got the runner bearing down on him and he's coming from behind him. You can sense him. Sometimes you can hear him. But that one took a long time to get there and a good rolling slide by Berkman. Fortunately no advance on the part of Kent. And for Ramon I don't think he dreamed that that could have been to because that was too slow a flip. The Cubs do get the leading base runner now with Bagwell up a perfect night for him three singles all hard hit. And there's another hard hit ball but he yanked it into the seats foul strike one to Bagwell. Shoulder looks to me Steve like tonight it's feeling a whole lot better. That injection of anti inflammatory actually it's a steroid type injection. Not to build muscle per se, just to take away inflammation. Seems to have worked pretty well. But that will only last so long, and the arthritic condition is not going away anytime soon. And as you've said, that cortisone over time, the more you take it, the more destructive it can be. And Bagwell said, Look, my shoulder's already shot. I'm just trying to be as productive as I can. So he's just trying to battle through it for this Houston team. Takes a called strike inside corner. It's nothing in two to it. The 0 2 pitch. And him out in front. Slowly but surely, Stoney Remlinger starting to sharpen his. Pitch selection up. Two outs. That was the best changeup he's thrown tonight. When it's right, it just dies away from the right hand hitters. And he has Bagwell well out in front of it. See the speed 82. Couple that with a fastball at 90 or 91. And a hitter from the release point or the velocity of the arm can't tell it's a changeup. That's why it's that effective. Hensburg has an infield hit that came in the fourth inning for Houston tonight. Cubs are leading four to one in the eighth. Fly ball left center field. Long run. Corey still going on the track. Leaps up. What a catch by Patterson. Oh baby what a grab. Houston is done in the eighth and the Cubs putting it all together on this road trip. Hyundai Initial Quality is winning people over. The Hyundai Sonata was just named the highest ranked entry midsize car in Initial Quality by J.D. Power & Associates. That dedication to quality lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. And the feature-packed Hyundai Sonata starts for as little as $15,339. So don't buy another sedan before you check out the highest ranked Hyundai Sonata. Hyundai, win. Get a 2004 Sonata with 2,000 cash back or 0% APR. Thomas Schmidt. Schmidt! It's tough being the first one of my college friends to get a job. We like to talk a lot. Guess how many cookies I have in my mouth? Four, I Uh, six. That's why we all joined in. 
Join in and make free calls to any Verizon Wireless customer anytime without using any planned minutes from our national in coverage area. Bring home toilet paper. Is your group in? Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Even close up, hair color should look natural. That's why today's Just for Men with X Gray Science targets only the gray hair, replacing it with subtle tones that match your own color. In five easy minutes, Vitamin Enrich Just for Men rejuvenates hair, brings back a natural look. No matter how close up she gets. Just for Men with X Gray Science, the rejuvenator. Our producer of Cubs Baseball on Fox Sports Net is Bob Albrecht. Tonight's game directed by Dave Turner, our associate producer, Joe Corneo. Production manager Moheen Ramsey. Thanks for the shirts, Moheen. Our executive producer is Josh Wine. John Graham's our vice president of programming and Steve pitching speed and defense. The calling card for the Cubs tonight. In this outfield here in Houston, there's no substitute for blazing speed. And Corey Patterson is going to have a good shot at a gold glove in center field. He's got a lot of competition, but Corey's as good as any of them. Andrew Jones has a whole lot of gold gloves. Corey will have a whole lot in his future. And that hill in center field has been giving Greg Biggio all kinds of problems. Here he tries to ascend the hill. He doesn't get there. Here he goes back again, and he can't outrun the ball. And here he goes back to the hill and can't get that one. So when he crashed into the wall on that incline, not a real comfortable position. And with no disrespect intended for the veteran Astros performer, Craig Biggio is over the hill tonight. Well, he's up the hill, certainly. <laughs> yes. And the Cubs leading going to the night. Four to one with Pullinger in to face Todd Walker. That one gets past Bagwell. It's got to be an error. It's got to be the fourth error of the year. He was in front of it. Just had it bounce off the glove. We'll wait for the official ruling. And the answer is it's got to be E1. They don't have Bob Rosenberg's magic. E3, point. rather. And it is E3 now. Putting Todd Walker at first in this ninth inning. There's Bullinger's slate. We saw him in game one of this series in relief of Roger Clement. Pitched a spotless inning. The punts, and it's a beauty. Bullinger had better hurry, and that one just got Martinez at first. He almost took too long. A very slow developing play. Well, not getting the ball quickly, you had no angle to make the throw. And that's Little Bully. His brother, Jim Bullinger, pitched for the Cubs, among other teams. Good bunt by Ramon. And Bullinger has to throw it over his head to make the play. Ideally, you'd like to get an angle on that one, but he didn't have that luxury. I was looking for an insurance run. Osmus out to talk to Bollinger, who got Aluda ground out in the seventh inning of game one, but I would imagine Steve to remind him, don't make a mistake with a fastball to this guy. Tim Redding and Greg Maddox, the pitchers of record. Here in Houston, we're in the ninth. The Cubs were down one nothing in the first. Houston made it stand up until the seventh. The Cubs scored two in that frame. They got two more in the eighth inning. Off reliever Dan Maselli. And now with three outs to get, that's all that stands between themselves and a five and one road trip. Kirk Bullinger throws sinkers, doesn't throw overly hard, much tougher on right-handers than left-handers. Moises should get a good look at him. See those fastballs, 83, 84, 85. Occasionally, if he gets real happy, he'll get it up to 86. But he depends on downward movement and getting ground balls. Cubs bullpen is busy. You figure it would be Latroy Hawkins time for the bottom of the ninth. That's who it is. But if you pick up this run, maybe not. Moises avoided that pitch. 
One ball, two strikes. Oakland's made a game of it in St. Louis. They've scored twice in the sixth. Cardinals clinging to a 3 to 2 lead at Bush Stadium tonight. Go, Oakland, go. Moises swung through that. He is out number two in the ninth inning. And Aramis Ramirez comes up. Ramirez has had a big night. He's not among the league leaders at third base as far as votes are concerned, but he's getting close. And when you look at his numbers, obviously Scott Rowland's having an all world year, but Ramirez is a close second. Jack McKeon in consultation with the rest of the National League will select the all star reserves, as of course the Marlins were the world champions. I would think he's going to reward some of his guys for their performances last year with this year's all star team. Slow roller hit towards short. Vizcaino gets the convenient hop and the throw to first is in time to retire the side. Three more outs to get in Houston and the lower third coming up against Latroy Hawkins. Introducing Summer Takeoff. Stay at any Amerisuites or Wellesley Ensign Suites and receive $100 off any airline ticket anytime. So check in and take off. Cubs World Series tickets. $20. I give up my life savings. $1,000. My cat. My condo. My car. My mom. My 401k. My brother. My sister. I have two kidneys. I will give you up. Seeing the Cubs in the World Series? Oh man, uh, it's, it's priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Accepted wherever there's hope. With the best-selling vehicles in America, only one has Focus, one of Car and Driver Magazine's 10 best five years running. Only one has Mustang, with the power and performance that's made it an American legend. And only one has Taurus, one of the most popular vehicles on the road today. Ford is the one. Get 0% financing or $2,500 to $3,000 cash back on America's favorite cars. Plus, get an extra $1,000 on Taurus when financed through Ford Credit. Ford, the one and only. Try Arby's new Market Fresh Wraps. Tender, fresh sliced meats, authentic cheeses, and tasty sauces. Made fresh when ordered on a low-carb wrap. Counting carbs never tasted so good. This exciting Cubs finish is brought to you by New Finish, the once-a-year car polish. Well, Steve, the gentleman on the left, a whole lot happier than... Astros fan on the right and the man on the left hoping to be dancing in the aisles if Latroy Hawkins can nail this one down in the bottom of the ninth inning. He will face Lane, Osmus, and then a pinch hitter. Buck had the save last night and then ran his total to six. His ERA way down there in the mid ones. And he'll start out with Lane, Osmus, and We'll see who Jimmy Williams goes to. Cup fans very happy about this series so far. And all closers ask if they could order up a save. Would be enter the game with one inning to get. Right. Nobody on and a three-run lead. And that's what faces LaTroy right here. Lane's the first man up. By the way, seven, eight, nine on the lineup card. Potentially makes the task easier. And let's see if Latroy can get it done again tonight. One ball, no strikes to Jason Lane. Well, last night, Hawk came in, gave up a double to Viscaino, and then retired three straight for the save. And that was the heart of the order. Anthony sinking for a strike. Ball, 
one strike. One more to get, and Lane will have a seat. It's kind of surprising this year for the Astros, the fact that they normally take advantage of their home park. But this year, playing just 500 here, and maybe one of the reasons, a very spacious center field, and a guy without the Juan Pierre, Corey Patterson type speed patrolling center field. But you can't put it all on one guy, that's just one factor. I think their bullpen is not nearly as invincible as it was in the past. Well, you could have, when, when you played the Astros the last few years, it was at most a six inning game because Lidge shut you down, Dotel then shut you down because he had the safety net of Wagner coming in and he got everybody out. Without Wagner slotting everybody up one slot, they're not near as overpowering. Lidge is still terrific, but they're lacking that one other setup man. Oh man, what a pitch. That thing just exploded up and in in the strike zone and Lane missed it by a foot. One up, one down in the bottom of the ninth inning. One of the things that's going to hold the Troy Hawkins in good stead, regardless of whether he's setting up or closing, is that he can usually throw the ball where he wants to. That time he went up by design. He set him up downstairs and went up and struck him out. And that's what the Cubs do so well under the tutelage of Larry Rothschild. Pryor does it. He does it pretty much automatically. Kerry Wood has learned to do it. Zambrano's even learned to do it. And I think that's the influence of Larry Rothschild on his pitching staff. If you got a strong arm, there's a lot of strikeouts up and out of the strike zone. Osmus pops the first pitch he sees up to the right side. And the Cubs are in business. Two men out. And Orlando Palmero is the final Houston hope here in the ninth inning. Again, they're shorthanded without Adam Everett available with a hamstring problem. That sends what's left of a 36,000 numbered crowd heading for the parking lots. The Cubs one out away from winning the first three of this series in Houston. Greg Maddox in line to win number six as he closes in on the inevitable 300th win. More important, he gets the Cubs a five game winning streak with one more out and a whale of a road trip with one more game pending. A strike to Orlando Palmero. Again the Cubs found a way against Tim Redding. Who threw the ball great through six innings before starting to run out of gas in the seventh. Ground ball towards second. Walker is there and the Cubs have beaten Houston again. Four to one is the final score. Career win number 295 for Maddox. It's a five and one trip Steve Stone and the Cubs are rolling here in Texas. And in this one it was a team effort. You see 32 and six when scoring four more runs. That's a testament to a tremendous pitching staff a very solid defense. Corey Patterson with some great defense in center field a big hit by Hollinsworth and Greg Maddox winning number six and a lot of very happy Cubs so Greg Maddox with his pitching and defense our Hyundai player of the game he didn't walk anybody he had real good stuff tonight and after a shaky first he just slammed the door on the Astros the rest of the way and this ball club is starting to come together. And conversely, Houston fighting the injury bug, fighting some problems in their bullpen, are really stumbling. They've lost 16 of their last 27 games. They've scored just 26 times over their last 11. And the Cubs creeping closer to the Central Division lead, Gale and Dave, while the Astros searching for answers. 4-1, Cubs win again in Houston. Those are your happy totals for Steve Stone. Chip Carey from the ballpark. Let's send it back to you in Chicago. Thanks, Chip. Coming up on the ATA postgame show, the Cubs have been battling and winning in this series. Dusty Baker's one happy skipper. He'll join us live. There will soon be some disorder to the Cubs' batting order. What will Dusty Baker do when Sammy and Grudzi come back? And Ken Griffey Jr. is sitting on 499. Does he finally reach the milestone 500 tonight? News and notes from around the league on the postgame show next. Fox Sports Nets coverage of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by 
Southwest Airlines, over 2,800 nonstop daily flights to 60 destinations all across the country. Your Chicagoland Pontiac dealers. Heineken, it's all about the beer. Heineken. Comcast, proud to be Chicagoland's cable company. Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, nobody makes whiskey like Jack Daniels. And by Hyundai, when your car comes with America's best warranty, you win. Hyundai. It's a hurricane warning, folks. Category 5, severe coastal flooding and Grab, oh, whatever you can, meet me back here. Bye. Hey, baby doll. No. <laughs> We're gonna die. The 260 horsepower supercharged Grand Prix Comp G. The new 275 horsepower GXP. And now, the 350 horsepower GTO. Pontiac, fuel for the soul. I can't believe I ate all that with just these. <laughs> so you feel like doing anything tonight? Let's get changed and go run a movie. I like it. Okay. Now you can get the movies you want without leaving home. What? Hit pay-per-view movies starting every half hour. From Comcast Digital Cable, your life connected. Can we do a little? Can we go again? Can we do a little? Can we made it more. Can we do a little? Can we made it better. Made it faster. Can we go again? Comcast doubled the speed of its already blazing fast internet for the same great price. So what will you do with the twice as fast power of Comcast high speed internet? Call now and get Comcast high speed internet for just $19.99 a month for the next four months. Wednesdays presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Chicago Cubs post game show live from Fox Sports Net. High fly ball belted right center field. Biggio on the run at the track at the hill. He can't make the play. The ball dropped. He can't find it. Ramirez around third. He'll get the green light. There'll be no relay and the Cubs take advantage of Towns Hill again. Todd Hollinsworth with a key RBI. See Stone's key on the night. Hello and welcome into the ATA Chicago Cubs postgame show. Gail Fisher alongside Dave Otto and four does seem to be the magic number for the Cubs as they win it four to one. Now 32 and six when scoring four or more runs. Let's head right out to Minute Maid Park in Houston and bring in the Cubs. Brock has seen with Chip Carey and Steve Stone who are digging in with Dusty brought to you by Nissan. Guys. All right, Gail. Thank you very much. And before I allow my Cy Young Award winning compadre to talk about the pitching aspect of this game, Dusty, Let's talk about Corey Patterson. His bunt, his speed, and a great catch, all part of the highlight reel in game three tonight in Houston. Yeah, it was. And I tell you, I mean, everybody's talking about Corey in center field, but boy, I mean, you can't take away speed. I don't know, but a couple guys in this league might have caught that ball. And we were saying, come on, come on. And, uh, you know, our bullpen was spent. Um, you know, man, that was great. I mean, really wasn't crazy about the matchup, you know, right there. but. We really didn't have any choice actually uh, tonight if we didn't want to burn out Farns he's gone like five out of seven and uh, you know we didn't have Merck tonight because he <laughs> he twisted his ankle in, in practice and uh, so you know our bullpen was down then you know we really didn't have <laughs> Anderson he went four innings the night before and oh, well the first night here and uh, who else Lester you know we really wasn't available really so. That was big by Rim and big by Corey to save us from having to go to Farnsey because we were trying to stay away from Farnsey. And then he walked the first guy in the eighth, and we were like, oh, no, please, uh, you know, no runners with these guys coming up next. But overall, the guys did a great, great job tonight. And Dusty, your team has been doing something that good teams do. If they do get the lead, even if it's by a run, they add on late. That takes a whole lot of pressure off your pen. And the last two nights, 
nobody from the pen has given up a run. So you guys are having a great road trip to this point. Well, yeah, I mean, so far it's good. It'd be great after tomorrow's victory, hopefully. And uh, I mean, their bullpen is spent, ours is spent, and uh, you know, Greg Maddox did a great job tonight. You know, getting us deep into the ball game, and it was hot out here, and uh, you know, he had had enough, and you know, that's why we took him out in that situation. We're hoping to get one more out of him, but. Um, you know, he didn't have any more left in his tank, and uh, <laughs> I'm just glad he got the victory because uh, the last time he got beat three to two in Anaheim, he threw a great game, and we certainly wanted to get him this victory this time. 295 for Greg Maddox in his lifetime, Dusty, and tomorrow, Glendon Rush. We talked about it during the broadcast tonight. Where would this Cubs team be without Glendon Rush's contributions? He's been a great unexpected surprise for you. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's been he, he's been outstanding for us, and hopefully, he can go. Deep in the game, we can go home uh, uh, with a victory and go home with a fresh bullpen, hopefully tomorrow. Dusty, thanks as always for the visit. Great win tonight, 4-1. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, see you later. All right, Skipper Dusty Baker, Steve, final thoughts from Game 3 in Houston tonight. But the Cubs played very well. They executed very well here tonight. When they had a chance to score some runs, they did. When they had to bunt, they were able to bunt. They also were able to execute defensively, and against a good team, you're going to have to do that. This is a good Astro team. They're struggling with the injuries, but it's still a team that had beaten the Cubs four or five coming into this one. So you don't feel any sorrow for them. The Cubs are four and four against them. Remember, only once in the last 11 years have the Cubs won a season series from the Astros. That was last year. And they defeated Houston by one game, beating him by two in the season series. These were big games against the Astros. And the Cubs guys are doing it against baseball's best. June figured to be the toughest month on the schedule. Right now, Galen Dave, the Cubs are three over 500 this month. And hopefully they can go four over with Rush against Oswald tomorrow night in Houston. Okay, Chip, thank you very much. Have a good game tomorrow and a safe trip back here to Chicago. Look forward to seeing you guys. All right. Stoney, let's talk about the Lexus keys to the game. And I know you mentioned Todd Hollinsworth, who continues to swing very well for the Cubs right now. Well, he's also playing real good defense, and he came through with a triple tonight that helped the Cubs put this thing away. And at the time, the game was very much in jeopardy. I figured with just two starts left before Sammy comes back, Hollinsworth would do something special. He was able to do just that, and the Cubs, in the end, showed what they've shown all year. They've got some real good pitching on this team. It's only going to get better as Kerry Wood comes back. Now you have Remlinger healthy. The bullpen is starting to solidify. Hawkins at the end looks terrific, but Hollinsworth was right in the middle of everything tonight. Well, my, my key, Steve Stone, was uh, Bagwell and Kent. And while Bagwell got three hits in the ball game, Mad Dog was able to keep both of them in the ballpark, which I think was uh, critical in this ball game. And, and getting back to what you said about starting pitching, the Cubs haven't had a bad start since June 9th against the St. Louis Cardinals. And to give up only five runs at Minute Maid Park in three games, that's pretty special. Well, they've had series in this park like that, but not too often. This is a real good team. They're just struggling at home. At this point, they're below 500 at home. We're talking about the Astros. But, Dave, I want you to keep picking the other team. You You've done it. a great job of that, and as long as you do it, the Cubs are going to be in very good shape. Stoney rubbed off on me on that road okay. trip in Anaheim. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, thank you very much. Have a good game tomorrow. We'll see you over thank the weekend. You. All right, Dave. Greg Maddox, as uh, Chip Carey mentioned, 295 right now, five wins away from career 300. He got his sixth win tonight. Let's take a look back at the highlights and start from the beginning. Maddox is in a zone, very efficient lately. He did get into some trouble early on in this ball game. Bottom of the first leadoff man, Craig Biggio, doubles down the left field line, and that's going to set the table. You know, Maddox will give up runs early because he's not in the hitter's head yet. If he if he lasts through that first inning, it, you know, he, and he did really. I mean, a sacrifice bump by this guy, you know, here. Now you have a man on third, and now you're facing Berkman. He hasn't been able to set up any hitters yet. And here, fastball into Berkman, he gets a base hit. That's the only run. Vigio comes comes in. It's one nothing Astros right away. No problem though, Dave. Top of the fifth, two outs. Redding facing Maddox. Redding walks Maddox. Mad Dog did it all tonight. You know, base hit, walk. Todd Walker now up next. Walker singles to right. Maddox moves to third. Has some great base running. Heads up play there. That creates a Felto window of opportunity. Ramon Martinez at the plate. Redding in some trouble here, and he's going to walk Martinez to load the bases. Yeah, Redding was wild in this particular inning. You know, he missed down there, but he, you know, a couple pitches in here. Questionable call? Well, not really. Watch Moises a little stop Greg Maddox right here. He said, wait a minute. I'm still hitting. That one hit my back. However, the home plate umpire said it hit him. He walks down to first. Maddox with his, or Alou with the smile. 
Huh. Dave, he was being honest. <laughs> I guess. I'm not sure we wanted that because uh, Moises ends up flying out, and that's going to end the threat. <laughs> He's an honest man, Moises yeah. Alou. All right, on to the sixth inning. Maddox strikes out Berkman. Oh, that goes Johnson. Next batter, Jeff Kent. Flashes the leather here. He always gets those day plays because some great defense. I like the cat. Nice play by D. Lee on the, around the horn, too. Stop of the seventh now. Man on second, nobody out. Paul Paco lines one into right field. Patterson scores on this play, and we're all caught up. You know, Redding was up in this particular inning, and this is where the Astros missed Billy Wagner because they could have brought in Lidge in the seventh, then Dotel, then Wagner. Instead, Redding stays in the ball game. He gets hurt here. Sacrifice fly. Plates the Cubs' second run. Berkman with a nice grab there. That could have been more trouble, but two to one Cubs now. Bottom of the seventh, two on, two out. Mike Remlinger in relief. This guy, you know, hits it back to Remy, tosses it to first, ends the inning. Yeah, and as Dusty Baker mentioned, one of few relievers available tonight's bargain. Scott Hollinsworth now. Dave, this would be a home run in another ballpark, but he's going to get the triple. Well, it's Yellowstone to center, and with the hill, uh, tough play for Biggio. And drives in Ramirez for the Cubs. Third run. Next batter then, Derek Lee. Lee's going to hit one to left. That one's deep enough, so Hollinsworth will tag up and score, but this throw is right on the money. If he catches it, this could be a play at the plate. Made it close. Austin is deking him, decoying him. Uh, good throw from Berkman. It brought some rain, though. Ensberg now in the bottom of the eight. Flies out Corey Patterson with a nice grab. So defense wins it in the end for the Cubs as they win 4-1 to one on 11 hits. A couple of notes. Ramirez with three hits in this ball game. We just saw Hollinsworth with that key triple, his first triple of the season. Bagwell returns to the lineup and has three hits on the night. Berkman, two for three. And I have to make a note. Dave about Mike Gallo. It was actually the Houston Astros bullpen that sort of gave it up. Gallo yeah. did not give up any runs, but I have to make this point. On Friday, he's a lefty. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Williams calls him in to face Scott Pesednik. Pesednik hits a three-run home run off of him. Then on Sunday, he gets called in to face Jeff Jenkins, gives up a two-run home run to Jenkins. Tonight, he gets called in to face Corey Patterson, the lefty. Corey hits a triple off yeah, of him. Yeah, he's giving up some yardage. Mike Gallo's job is to get those lefties out. He's not doing it. Nope. Aramis Ramirez has been huge for the Cubs in this series. He's been 6 for 13 with 3 RBI, 3 run, and a home run. So he's been the key man in this Houston series. Well, you know, this offense right now, you get great starting pitching, and you hang around long enough where the offense is going to come to life. And right now, Aramis Ramirez, particularly on everything down right now, he's just driving it. I mean... But when you watch him hit, it, it, he has really quick hands. And with quick hands, you're able to stay back a little bit longer, get a longer look at the pitch, and drive the ball. Defensively, only three errors this year. A game saver in last night's ball game. You know, quick first step right now. You're making all the plays. And you know what? You make some tough pitches to him, and he's still getting his knocks. I mean, a couple of these pitches are in, on his, in his kitchen. He's able to get the head out and drive it. Three hits tonight. And boy, if I'm a pitcher, I don't know where I'm throwing him downstairs because right now, anything down, he's hitting it hard somewhere. There's a battle in RBI producers in the NL Central. The Cardinals have Scott Rowland. Cubs have Aramis Ramirez. Yes. Still to come on the show, Greg Maddox with another quality start. He's Mr. Efficient. We'll break down his performance. And Ken Griffey Jr. is staring down number 500. Does he finally get it tonight? Closed captioning on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Announcing the ATA Fare Better Sale. The easier way to get a great fare with bigger planes, more seats, and more low fares. You'll fare better on ATA. Attack the pin, or play it safe. Go for birdie, or settle for par.
Inside the golfer. Inside the game. Preset. It's what's inside. Creating Chicago's best pizza begins with selecting the best ingredients. The best tomatoes, vegetables, meats, and cheeses all come together to create Giordano's famous stuffed pizza, which is why we wouldn't think of serving you anything but the best. From pizzas to the freshest salads, soups, spaghettis, lasagna, chicken, parmesan, and much more. Giordano's, where being the best isn't just a slogan, it's a Chicago tradition for nearly 30 years. Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. When it starts showing up in video games, don't let the needle pushing T5 turbo performance mess with your mind. It's still built like a Volvo. Introducing the all new Volvo S40. Question of the night, who's been the most effective leadoff hitter in the NL Central? You gotta love Cub fans coming in with the vote tonight. 70% say Todd Walker, and that is a good call. Although, I'd have to say Craig Biggio should maybe be a second. But Sednick's good too, though. Well, it was scary tonight. Todd Walker got undressed at second base on a double play. Hopefully, he'll be okay, but he was shaken up on the play. Walker has been outstanding in that leadoff role for the Cubs. Greg Maddox was outstanding in his performance tonight, Dave. Only 85 pitches for Mad Dog. Very efficient every time out and always puts the Cubs in contention to win. He gets the W on the night. By the way, he is now 24-9 and nine lifetime against Houston, the second most number of wins in his career against a ball team. Our fine producer, Todd Benjaminson, came up with an inter interesting stat. In 10 starts, these last 10 starts, two walks. In another game where he doesn't walk anyone, I think the key to tonight's ball game was the changeup. He had a great change of speed. You know, his fastball is that much more crisp now, and because of that, there's his changeup grip right there. Throws it just like a fastball, turns it over a little bit. He had a good one tonight. You know, getting everybody out on the front foot. And here he gets Mr. Kent. Kent's way off the plate. Just throw that change up away and you got him. And another one here to Vizcaino. You know, all game long, add and subtract. Throw the fastball, throw the change up, getting everybody on the front foot. As the game progressed, he gets tougher on hitters because then he's in your head. The only guy that was able to stay back on his changeup was Mr. Bagwell right there. This is a perfect motion. Leg up, comes down, and then out. And then with that perfect finish, feels his position unbelievable. He's like a cat on the mound. So he went six in the third innings. There you go. No walk, struck out five, gave up just that one earned run. Tim Redding on the other side, seven innings for him, giving up eight hits. Two earned runs, and then his bullpen did not help him out any tonight. He was he was so so, Dave. You know what? The, the Cubs hung in there with Maddox's start, and then the offense came around. You know, Redding, early on in the ball game, had a nasty sinker down, but then all of a sudden everything lifted up, and that's when the Cubs' offense came to life in that seventh inning. The one thing you notice about Maddox is he is playing all sides of the field, offense, defense, obviously his pitching, but he can play it all and he helps himself along the way. He's a tremendous athlete. Uh, I mean, a, a guy that, could, that you're right, he can do it all. I mean, he can field, fielding his position is unbelievable and that's all the gold gloves in his, in his mantle. You know, he swung the bat well tonight too, helping himself out. You know, he gets a fastball down the chute and he's ahead in the count, he's gonna do something. He draws a walk. You know, as far as running the bases, you know, he takes the extra base. He goes from first to third uh, on this particular play. 
You know, a lot of pitchers go station to station. You know, Mad Dog, while he doesn't run particularly well, I mean, he was able to go to first to third here. He's got seven stolen bases, stolen base this year. And then he helps himself by, by laying down a perfect bunt. You know, all those things can add up. And by doing those little things, you can stick around longer in a ball game. You know, if you can't hit, you can't bunt, you might get taken out in the seventh, sixth or seventh inning. And then defensively, I mean, he takes so many outs away. It's almost as if when he throws the baseball and he knows where, he knows where the location's going to be, I mean, here's his motion again. Sometimes he will throw the pitch. If it's inside, he might jump to the right side. If he throws it away, he might jump to the left side. <laughs> He's unbelievable. He got win number six on the season, now at 295, five away from 300. Time now to take an ATA fly around the bases. Let's check out some other games. The Reds, namely against the Rangers. Ken Griffey Jr. sitting on 499. Kenny hit 500 tonight. First at bat, Griffey gets a hold of one, but it's too high and too shallow. The fly out. His second at bat, he fouled out. Third at bat with two outs, one on. He takes a walk. Here's the foul out. Boy, how about Griff? Right now, Junior is facing all left-handed hitters. And while he does hit left-handed left pitchers well, the same time, <laughs> that's, that's tough. All these lefties, they sit there. But, uh, his family has been with him every step of the way. That was his wife and his father looking on to see if he can do it at home. The final at bat, not going to get it done. He'll have one more chance to do it at home tomorrow. We'll keep you posted on that. Checking out the NL Central standings then with a Reds victory, by the way. They beat Texas 7-4, <laughs> so they remain one and a half games back. The Cubs are one and a half games back because St. Louis is still in progress. That, of course, Dave, could move up to only one game back if somehow the Cardinals lose this one. Boy, and there's no sympathy for the Houston Astros with all their injuries right now. Milwaukee continues to hang on. Pittsburgh scuffling. St. Louis up, by the way, 3-2 in the eighth inning. On to the White Sox, who are down in Florida. Another uh, milestone in the making here as Carlos Lee has his hit streak going. Bottom of the fourth, though, no score. Mike Lowell delivers a two-run shot to left. The fish go up 2-0 early on. On to the bottom of the fifth. One out, two on. Juan Pierre singles off the glove of Juan Uribe. Two runs will score on this play. The ball rolls into center field. 4-0 fish. And on in the top of the ninth, here it is, Dave. Carlos Lee hits streak on the line, and he goes down swinging. Strikes out 0 for 4. So that hit streak has now ended at 28 games. The White Sox go on to lose it 4 to nothing. All right, every Wednesday on the ATA Fly Around the Bases, we're going to announce a winner for the ATA voucher sweepstakes going on right now, and we do have that winner for tonight. It is Robin Klein, and I hope I'm saying your name right, Robin. Robin Klein of Naperville, Illinois, wins the ATA vouchers. And you can log on to fsnchicago.com to enter yourself and have a chance to win your own ATA vouchers. And then be sure to turn in every Wednesday for the ATA Fly Around the Bases segment to see if you are a winner. Still to come on the show, Glendon Rush and Roy Oswald will take them out in the series finale in Houston tomorrow. The Cubs going for the sweep. And Aramis Ramirez, where will he bat once Sammy Sosa comes back to the lineup? The ATA Chicago Cubs postgame show is brought to you in part by Subway. It's what you eat when you want to eat fresh. Subway, eat fresh. It comes to fresh. No one does it like Subway. Behold our line of delicious low-fat sandwiches. Made fresh with under six grams of fat. Pile on fresh veggies. And don't forget the fresh baked bread. Because this is Subway. And this is how you eat fresh. Subway. Eat fresh. The real Subway series is going on now at Subway restaurants. What side are you on? Try Dusty's North Cider with ham and pepperoni. Or Ozzy's South Cider with turkey, roast beef, and bacon. Just $2.99 each. Subway. Eat fresh. Announcing the ATA Fair Better Sale. The easier way to get a great fair with bigger planes, more seats, and more low fares. You'll fare better on ATA. So I'm gonna go easy, go ATA. I'm gonna go easy, go ATA. It's all about.
about freedom to see clearly, to be at the top of your sport, the top of your profession, at the top of the world. It's freedom brought to you by Kraft Laser Vision Correction. No one can match the Kraft Eye Institute in laser vision experience or results. Why trust your eyes to anyone else? The Kraft Eye Institute, it's freedom to see, to do, to be your best. Call Kraft today and see how far freedom can take you. driver spends a mere 1% of the time in reverse. Yet considering what's at stake, that's 1% we didn't want to ignore. The backup camera, available in the Lexus RX 330. At your Chicago area Lexus dealer. Bass Pro Shops. It's more than an outdoor store. It's a place where adventures begin. Maybe it's a weekend on the water the fishing trip of your dreams, camping far away from it all, or good times in the field. Bass Pro's got more great gifts for Dad. The good stuff at the lowest prices guaranteed. Give him a Bass Pro Shops gift card and watch him become a kid again. Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World. Your adventure starts here. Salira, the Cubs loaded lineup face off against one of the best in the AL West when they battle Jermaine Dye and the A's in this interleague showdown. Interleague play presented by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Try Arby's new Market Fresh Wraps. Tender, fresh sliced meats, authentic cheeses, and tasty sauces. Made fresh when ordered on a low-carb wrap. Counting carbs never tasted so good. And every Sunday here on Fox Sports Net, we give you the most comprehensive look at the week in baseball. It's Chicago Baseball Extra, and you can catch it Sunday, 10 p.m. This week, I'll be hosting along with Joe Girardi and Ron Kittle. We'll break down the north and south sides of town. You don't want to miss Chicago Baseball Extra. Also, a national perspective from Kevin Kennedy this Sunday, 10 p.m. Welcome back to the show, and it's going to be a big weekend for the Cubs at Wrigley Field versus Oakland. They're going to get a couple of guys back, Sammy Sosa and Mark Rudzelanik, and pretty soon, Dave, they might have just about everybody back. Alex Gonzalez may be coming back around the All-Star break, and it's going to be pretty interesting to see this lineup for the Cubs. Dusty Baker's going to have a lot of decisions to make. Well, it could come at a better time because you're going to see Mulder and Zito uh, this weekend. It's interchangeable, three, four, and five. I imagine Sammy will go back to this customary three spot. You know, Michael Barrett has done such a terrific job. The only difference really in the lineup here as opposed to opening day is uh, Michael Barrett hitting second, Corey Patterson down in the order. Right now, Corey's comfortable hitting down there. I like him hitting behind Derek Lee. And again, Barrett has done so well hitting behind runners, getting on base. And you can really interchange three, four, and five. Sosa, Loon, Ramirez. Dusty Baker sends spring train Ramirez. This is RBI guy, and you like to have that guy in your five hole. Moises Alou was filling in in that three spot while Sammy has been gone, moving Aramis Ramirez up to the four spot. He is the RBI guy, but Dave, he's batting in that cleanup spot, and he leads the league as far as cleanup hitters go. Yeah, he's doing a terrific job, and, and you know, probably not seeing as good of pitches as, as he's normally going to be accustomed to. Uh, you know, Sammy, when he's in the lineup, everybody is going to see better pitches to swing at. You know, think about Ramirez and what's made him such a successful hitter this year and last year is his ability to go the other way. Flat out, I mean, he's staying on the ball so much better than when he was with the Pittsburgh Pirates. The other thing, he's one of the best low ball hitters in the game. You talk about somebody that can lift and separate at your guy Ramirez. So now all of a sudden with Sosa back in the lineup, you have about five guys that at any time can launch. And then you know Gonzo last year with 20 home runs. Well, Ramos Ramirez in that cleanup spot is batting 398. That tops Barry Bonds and Scott Rowland and his own teammate in, in Moises Alou. You mentioned the fact that they're going to see some different pitches. It, will it be better or worse? Right now, opposing pitchers, you know, they have to face Moises Alou and Aramis Ramirez. Right. You add Sammy Sosa to that, will that change the dynamic of what Mo will see? No question. And, you know, I mean, with Sammy as a threat, primarily whoever's hitting ahead of Sosa, uh, you're going to see better pitches to swing at. But then also behind, you know, I mean, Sosa's going to be on base, and it changes the whole dynamics of everything. Because as a pitcher, when you get through a guy like Sosa, you, you know, you breathe a sigh of relief, but there's no rest now in that Cubs lineup. 
Todd Hollinsworth has been filling in for Sammy Sosa in right field. He will go back to the bench, but what a great guy to have on your bench. He's a great pinch hitter, and he's really going to be a go-to guy for the Cubs when they need him. You know, don't forget also, as this season progresses, there's going to be a lot of guys that need some days off, and they haven't had that luxury. Now, granted, when the Cubs went to Anaheim, you were able to have some guys DH a couple of ball games. You're going to see Hollingsworth in center field sometimes. You're going to see Alou West a couple of times, and Hollingsworth play left field. You're going to see him spell Sosa occasionally and even play some first base. He has done a terrific job. But now what you have is you have somebody coming off the bench that can potentially tie the game.